Probably not actually because the bloody music's on. Oh, I can't hear that either. Oh, yeah, I can. Oh, right, there we are. Ow. Ow. Yeah, we can hear you. Good. I'll leave that, I'll leave that music there. Cool. Right. Um, probably need to turn that up. There we go. I have done my kneeing again. It's just good fun. Just all good fun. Good fun. Good morning, everybody. And it is pod- this is podcast number 114. <laughs> I have no idea what number it is. And to be quite honest, it doesn't matter. Uh, have you invited Ginger? Oh, no. I don't think I could. <sighs> number one is the time difference. So, I don't know what time it is in... What time is it in Wisconsin? Um, Wis-con-sin. There it is. Oh, there was a thing that said time. I forgot to say. Why don't you come up with the time when you just type that in? So, it is 4.30 in the morning. So, he is probably, I don't know, doing... Jesus things and touching himself at that time. Um, so yeah, it's a long, it's a long, long, long. What is it? Um, can't have ginger on the stream. It would make Max Kawasaki rust faster. I don't get that. <laughs> eh, any road. Um, What's it, what's it, what's it, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Oh, yes, so the name of this, the, the name of this stream is Crashed But Not Forgotten, I think. Um, he's waiting for the inspection officer, that sort of thing. I don't know about that early. Um, but, yeah, so, the, 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 it's become like an epidemic. Here's another one. Which is full build, rebuilding a crashed, damaged Ducati. It's just it's the buzzword bikes. You've got to have a Ducati. You've got to have the big bikes. So this is one L that people have been telling me about. He hasn't got many subscribers. My name is Kent. No, no, no. It can't be. <laughs> it can't be. Oh no. Can't be. And we're not watching it. We're not watching it all at all. I know someone said it's nearly, David said it's nearly two hours long. We're not watching it all. Jesus Christ, no. We're going to watch a time at the beginning, but his name is Kent. Right? That. Oh, Jesus Christ. His name is Kent. Right? So he's got 11,000 subs. Let's have a quick look at. Let's see if he's always done this or is he. Oh, he's done quite a few. Oh. Oh, he keeps on doing them. So, he's done this entire bike look for 3,000 views. And then this one's 22,000. He must be really happy. And then what else has he done? It's leaking money. It's smart decision. He's doing the thumbnails. He's doing the whole... Do an arrow. Do the big title. Do the... The meme face, the before the afters. It's coming though, ninety five thousand views, two hundred ninety two thousand. It's just doing the same shit. It's just the thing is right is that thirty six hour build is trying to do it fast. I don't know why you'd ever want to do it that time lapses. Uh, this just shows you how hard it is to break through, you see. You could put a woman in it, that's what you gotta do, get your missus involved, that's it, she could do all the work. Have her in hot pants look. Yeah, usual cheap fucking have some pride, man. Jesus Christ alive. 
No one dear name is Kent. And it's just it's just all the tricks look. Did I mess up? <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh jeez. Sit look, same thing, see look. Words that you can't read and then arrows. That's what you gotta do. Guys, we do this for quite a while, haven't we? That's it, get your missus on a bike. That's it, look, get get her tits out. This is this is it it's super low is this. Is it's one big L, one big loser. It, I th I think it's it's just an opinion, but I think it's stupidly fucking low. When you like you try and parade your misses around in front of people, I think it's just it's it it's shallow. It's really shallow. Now I don't. It, let me just get this right. Right, bikes of rye. I don't think he's doing that at all. He only brings his misses in. Um, when he actually does need a hand, because she does the work, and he tried to make fun of that, which I thought was really funny, actually, right? We'll, we'll actually go back, because I took the piss out of that slightly, but, um, yeah, so it's clear what this retard is, is trying to do. He's trying to do the same thing that everyone's trying to do. I wonder if he's got the money of Ginger. We'll get back to him in a minute. What I do want to do is get look at the Bikes of Rye video where I, I think he he thinks he's he's been funny. Um, I think he's he's been a bit of a tit. But people have been arguing the fact that well, at least he's having a bit of a laugh at it. I was like, eh, go on then. This right here is the engine to my Yamaha Thunder Race, and this right here is the Yamaha Thunder Race in question. And what I don't like about Ryan and. I hope you're listening, Ryan. I really do hope you're listening. Um, this isn't you in real life, so stop being like, well, maybe it is. If it is... If it isn't, um, stop doing it, please. Just be be more normal you in front of your mates. It doesn't mean you have to say fuck or bugger or anything like that. But what I'm saying is, unless you do stand like... A lost homosexual you look like someone who either needs a carer in this exact shot you look like someone who needs a carer or you really do need to tell your friends and you and your missus and your parents something about yourself because the the, the kind of audience you're trying to attract don't stand like that <laughs> in this upload we're going to finally install this engine into this frame but first, how do we get to this point? Well, it all began... Because your commentary is very like talking to a class of 12-year-olds. You get what I mean? It's like, when I click be more natural, be more just normal. Because I ain't got... I'm not a... It's not like a fucking... Hit. I, I don't know this guy at all. I've got no reason to... The only thing I don't like is some of the methods that he goes around and that he's jumping on this bandwagon and all this kind of jazz. The problem with the problem is it the problem with it is this. You go down this avenue, you try and go bigger and badder every single time, and eventually there will be there will be a very, very small news report. It'll be tiny because no one really cares. YouTuber kills himself, you know, because he due to failed breaks or something. There'll be one of them soon. It's coming. And I know they all think it's not going to be them. Um, but yeah, it it's going to happen. It'll be a small story, though. It won't be big news because people are like, no, oh, one dickhead kills himself. You know what I mean? This old 1998 YZF1000R, which had been left to rot for over 20 years. I went about stripping the bike down in order to replace the frame because of this dent and came across a few unexpected challenges in the process. But they were unex... You see, you say unexpected challenges, but they're unexpected because you fucked them up. Which led me to having to rebuild the top end of its engine. I can't remember why. Did you break an... It started out with you breaking an exhaust stud, and then you broke a cam stud, and all this shit. This was all fun and games, only I was trying to complete this rebuild from my driveway. 
and it was at this point when I was rebuilding part of the bike in the house and the engine on the driveway. See, you got it the wrong way around. You, you, you got it the you. <laughs> it's like you you've got you. <laughs> Sorry, mate. You come across unexpected challenges and just try to see. <laughs> Any road. Um, so basically, uh, you should be doing the frame outside and the engine inside. Just because you don't get condens, you don't get all that frost that's on that engine in it. Really, so you just you just asking for issues, right? And it's like you you've done this. I think it was this one or another engine where you rusted the shit out of the cylinders. And it's just like it's, there's no there's, there's no need for that. That this had got absolutely ridiculous. So I got myself a new workshop. So as I and the new workshop. It, it's not a new one, is it? Like, it's like, you know, hey, Dave, who's that ginger bird? It's like, oh, that's my new girlfriend. What happened to the old one? Oh, I'm going to tell you that I kicked her, but she got rid of me. But what I'm saying is is that it it's your first workshop, not a new one, right? I'm now in the comfort of my new workshop. I'm no longer going... I know it's new to him, but it's, it, words get to me. To be messing around, so let's do this. We pick up. Also, people turn around to me and say, "God, you nitpick everything he says." It's like this is a live stream or it's a video, whichever whichever format it comes in, where we're talking about the stuff that goes on in the video. If I just sit here and just don't say anything, then I'm not doing anything. Then I'm basically just plagiarizing someone's video. You know what I mean? But whatever. People don't seem to get that, that you've got a kind of like, you know, it's a commentary video, so you've got to add that in. And some people backwards and forwards find views from this. Other people just go, you're just robbing other people's videos. It's like, well, think about it like this. It's like, what robbing other people's videos, what is the problem with that? If we're just going to go what people say, what is the problem with robbing other people's videos? It's unethical. It's like, okay, why? And it's like, well, because... Because you're trying to make money. Number one is, the moment I say fuck on this live stream like that, the monetization has disappeared. Right, that's gone. Because I say it so early on, so frequent. I, out of all the live streams I've ever done, I've only only been able to monetize one of them. I don't fight it. If it goes through, it goes through. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um... So it, it's usually it goes down to limited ad, which means you make fuck all on it. And I don't care. I'd much rather tell the truth and say how things are than just try and be ultra safe and get monetization out of it. So that's number one. Number two is, what do you think this guy's doing? He, he presses record, he ruins a bike, and then he goes, <laughs> go on to Patreon, give me money to win this bike. It's like, it's the same thing. Like his entire intention is to do this, just to do this. Is it's like, it's like, so someone's making money out of their out of their YouTube videos. And the other thing is, well, is this is the other thing. No one said anyone can't do this with my videos. If someone reviewed my videos in the same way, fucking knock yourself out. This is what a lot of people don't understand: is that I'm fine for people to do it the other way. Just go for it. You know what I mean? Um, it it it. These things just, uh, yeah, what goes around comes around. So please go for it. And then someone might say, well, bikes are rising because he's, he's got higher standards than that. I've got, right, that, that name and standards don't exactly go together. <laughs> On this engine, with the top end almost complete, I have installed new shims, which we need to double check the valve clearances for. So we will clamp down the inlet cam. Whoa, whoa stay that again. I think you're doing this backwards. Workshop. I'm no longer going to be messing around, so let's do this. We pick up on this engine with the top end almost complete. I have installed new shims, which we need to double check the valve clearances for. I did say double check, cool. Um, yeah, that's it. So we will clamp down the inlet camshaft that is still out of place, and then recheck all the valve clearances to be sure they are now all in spec. Which turns out they are all fine, so we can continue to progress. That looks huge. 
that looked that that looked massive. Like, it looked like you were touching. You know, everybody's got to bend that to get it in. Which turns out, look, well, they all fly. Oh, that's good at an angle, and it just slipped in, no problem. Fine. It's not even. If you look, it's not even bending. Elf falling spec. Which turns. It, it goes right in, doesn't it? Bend. Out, they all. Or hardly bends. Look, it's like. There's no resistance there. Jesus. Fine. So we can continue to progress. In a previous upload, some of you roasted me for putting the top end back together dry. Well, yeah. What do you think oil's for? So, I have some oil. And yeah, but. You, you've already done it like several times now. And a new oil can. You don't need a bloody oil can. And check this out. Now you see, here he's been a smug bastard, which, alright, fair enough. It, it It's funny in the smallest degree, but yeah. But you see, you put your buckets in dry, you div. Alright. The next step is to make a little adjustment to the camshafts on the cam chain. I need to make sure the camshafts are timed up correctly, but I won't know for certain just yet. Right, you got your cam chain, you got your cam chain tensioner in there. That's why it's so bloody difficult. You see that snapping in is not timed up correctly. It's not good. It's not fucking behave. <laughs> but I won't know for certain just yet. I got myself a lovely. You're pushing against the edges of your. Um... Your cylinder head there, where you your cam block, your cam journals are. It's not. It's just oh. Ugh. New quarter inch torque wrench too. This allows me to torque up to those smaller values, which are needed for this next step. It's not. It's not scratching the cams because the cams are hard and steel. It's scratching everything else. It's like you could you could mushroom over your 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 journals slightly. That kind of shit. It's just there. Uh, yeah. Stop it. Yep. The camshaft clamp bolts require a torque setting of 10 newton meters. Look how much fun he's having. <laughs> Next up is a cam chain tensioner, which gets a new... I don't think... He did, he did not have that in. ...gasket, of course. We make sure we install it the correct way. Eric is taking that back out just now. Yep. Because I was looking before, you couldn't really see. This cam chain tensioner is automatic. This spring applies constant pressure to ensure the cam chain remains tight. This new torque wrench is perfect and gives me 20 Nm on this 12mm bolt. Well, why does it look so shitty? Caps shouldn't be taught with tension. Caps shouldn't be taught with tension loaded. Well, like, like I say, that's if he has. I think he has. I think he's just taking the cam chain tensioner out now. But yeah, because you would, you don't, you don't want the cams, you don't want the train to try and lift the cam out because then that puts a, a, an opposing force down to your tightening, which means you'll bind up early, which means basically everything will be loose. I now rotate the crank via the... But it, 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 just look at it. It's covered in shit. It's like garden variety shit. It's got its own, it's got its own fucking species of moss. <laughs> I now rotate the crank via the front sprocket using a ratchet. I put the crank through two complete engine cycles to check that the valves and springs don't lock the engine up. And isn't this a beautiful sight? We have the timing markers bang on with the engine set at top dead center. So I'm happy to progress and install the cam chain guide. Before fitting the camshaft cover, I felt it was looking a little tired. The, but you, you can't do one and not the... Okay, okay. So I thought, why not try and improve it and protect it by giving it a rub down, a clean up, and apply some black gloss hammerite. I oh God! <laughs> Straight out of nineteen ten. It was never going to look amazing, but.
but it was in an area that is hidden, so I just didn't mind. You see that this is this is the whole point. Is it your bike? If it's your bike, fine, but you're not you're gonna give this away. There's no pride in it, it's just it's just stelled all over. It's just like I'm gonna make it look like some nineteen fifties fucking railings. And it's like it doesn't matter though, because you can't, it's hidden. And you can't see it. Number one, it's not hidden. Number two is, if it was that hidden, why bother? You know, it, you got to remember what's happened is this. I've got an idea. I'm going to do this. Then it looked like shit. After the fact, it's like I'm not bothered. It looks shit. It's like, oh, of course you fucking don't. Why would you? You know, it it it's old Del Boy backpedaling. Never going to look amazing, but it was in an area that is hidden, so I just didn't mind. Oh, fucking look at that. Look at that. <laughs> and people put... People don't care. They don't care. How many views has this got? 7.7 thousand views. It's all he cares about. No one cares. People... I love... I don't know why people put in this. A reminder for everyone. Who's reading that? Like, seven people are reading that. Oh, Jesus Christ. Definitely improvement in lighting, framing of shots and sound quality. This, this is all that seems to matter to people. This is your best episodes in two years. It's like... Um, it, it, it's... It's bizarre. Do... I'll tell you what is funny, because someone sent me the, um, oh, what's it called now? The video of him, someone sent me the, the video of him, um, oh, what was he, he was, he was talking about his ambitions, there it is. Because we'll get, <laughs> we'll get a copyright strike. Not that I've got enough subscribers or views or anything, but one day I'm going to be an influencer. You... Now, I don't know if he's joking or not. We'll see. 26 miles away. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. It's not working. Well, do you want me to hold the phone for you? <laughs> classy. <laughs> you stay classy, San Diego. I'm leaving that on the video. I'm leaving that in. I'm actually going to leave that in. Oh. Do you want to turn the volume down? Because we'll get <laughs> we'll get a copyright strike. Not that I've got enough subscribers or views or anything, but one day. It's almost like a little whinge in it. It's, like, it's not like I've enough subscribers or something. I'm going to be an influencer. I'm sure you are going to be an influencer, you fucking dickhead but <laughs> yeah so you could say you could say it's a joke you could say it's something but the way he prances around this workshop right with his little bobble hat on and he's changing his camera angles it's just yeah now that's, it's that, that's how they work <laughs> Time to fit new spark plugs, which I had to use a tool from the bike's underseat tool bag because no one has spark plug sockets. Nobody, nobody. I didn't have an 18 millimeter deep socket. Right, so the top end is almost complete. I will need to return to those spark plugs once I get the correct socket and ensure they are torqued up to spec. But that's not going to hold me back. I'm going to progress, and what I'm going to do next is give the just clean it. This bottom end, a bit of a scrubber dumped up. I also thought it would be a shame to reinstall this engine before trying to remove over 20 years of oil and grime buildup, and so the product for the job was going to be gunk. And taking the shit I found at B&Q. In my new workshop stall on wheels for a spin, I move around the engine, brushing on the engine degreasant. <laughs> degreasant. It's a degreasant, everyone. Stall on wheel. What's it say on it? I'm sure it says degreaser, but whatever. Before trying to remove over 20 years of oil and grime buildup, and so the product for the job was going to be gunk. 
Right, does it say engine degreasants? Right. Think. And taking my new workshop stool on... It's not his fault. It's not his fault. It's someone else who's retarded. ...wheels for a spin. I move around the engine, brushing on the engine degreasant. I was happy with the result. It was never going to look spotless, but it's certainly a huge improvement. Um... Um... No. <laughs> you said huge. That That's what gets me. It, 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 that's what gets me. It's the huge bit. It's the huge bit. Oh, and I removed the oil filter in the process. I, I cleaned that, as you can see on the end. Right, it's the next day, and I've taken myself to Halfords because I need to get an 18mm socket. Here we are, then. We've got 14 I can't imagine me walking around Halfords or anywhere recording myself for YouTube. I just feel like a twat. Why would you do that? I just... you got to remember, right? It's like, I've been doing this for literally 10 years in like a week. Or, or 10 days or 13 days or something. I've been doing this for 10 years. Um, weekly. Um, sometimes, you know, one day after the other. Uh, for instance, I'm recording myself now, obviously, not with video, but I recorded myself last night doing the old Dell video. I recorded myself yesterday doing some powder coating. I recorded myself the day before, and, and so on and so on and so on and so on. Now, it's not something I specifically get a kick out of or anything else like that. I, I, I definitely, definitely... Don't go walking around the shops going, oh, look at me. It's like, oh, <laughs> I'm an influencer. <laughs> Just play it. 15, 15, 17, 19. Where's the 18? There's the bad boy. So I got it. 18 mil. Deep socket. Seven quid. While I'm here. <laughs> Steady big spender. Seven quid. You want a spark plug socket, mate? I should get myself also some anti-freeze and coolant. One litre. That'll do. How do you know it's not the other one? What's that? Does that say silicon on it? Anti-freeze and coolant. Yeah, silicate ones. Coolant. What's the one next to it? One litre. That's oats. Right, so that's organic acid technology. Does he know which one's which? Has he got any clue? That'll do. I've also picked up myself a funnel, which I've never... For your head. <laughs> For your head. Oh, Jesus Christ. Needed for quite a while. So hopefully that'll stop any spillage going forward. Back at the workshop and with my new 18mm socket, I talk up the spark plugs to, coincidentally, 18 Newton meters. Okay then, this is Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Just jazz hands. It's a part. I'm not looking At least it's not Evans. Well wait until I contact him. You see you say that. I I can smell famous last words. Looking forward to that engine is now ready to go in the frame of the Thunder Race. I'm not going to enjoy this, however, I've drafted in my girlfriend Nicole, who is behind the camera. Now, before we lift, right, this is the tasty bit. I do like this because it, 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 some people have argued he's just having a laugh. I get it, but you don't have to play, you don't have to do this for a long, it's a long bit. You get what I mean? It is a long bit. Such a heavy item, obviously. And, and like I say, it, it's already up there. How do you get it up there? How do you get it in there? Did six people help you? Just put. You, this is what I mean. It's like just. It's like this. Get the engine. Put it under there. Put a towel down. Bit of cardboard. Whatever. Put it under there. Job sorted. So he's trying to make a point, because me and some other people. I, I think it's some other people. I can't see it just be me. Are saying, um, you know, stop being such a fanny about it. And he's like, I'm, I'm not a fanny. I'll show you. And then doesn't do it. 
he's like completely gone over his head. I don't want to hurt myself. I think what's best to do right now... Well, this is the thing, right? That engine, so the uh, VFR engine I picked up off the ground is 70 kilos. We all saw that, 70 kilos. That engine, I believe, is about 60. The VFR is fucking heavy for an engine. It is really heavy compared to all the others. So, it's like, put the engine in, and it's like, you see, you don't want to hurt yourself, but it, the bike's right there. And when you actually see what it does, is it's like, all this big part is just moving that. Now, do you think, how much do you think his missus weighs? Like, what is 60 kilos in stone? Because people I don't ever weigh in. I know it's old fashioned, I need to stop doing it. Um... Kilograms to stone. Let's just say that engine weighs 60. So, nine and a half stone. Right? So, I reckon she weighs nine and a half stone. Uh, probably insulting her. She's probably, I don't know, she probably weighs about nine and a half stone. But if he can lift her, then he can lift. And he's like, oh, it's so fucking easy. Well, then you can lift the engine then. He says, I don't want to hurt myself. You imagine if he went down, I went, oh, my back. <laughs> Is. So just got to give those oh, those legs a good stretch. Warm up like, oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that. Oh, oh yeah. See that? Oh. And then he goes down and he can't lift her up. So he jumps. Oh, look at that squat. Oh, look. Ah! That's why he jumps, because he's not going to make it. <laughs> I can even jump. All right. Make sure you don't skip leg day, all right? But you... you... You're missing the point, right? Is you're missing the point is that you, we've seen your ankles, you've got the same ankles as your missus, right? <laughs> and you don't also lift the engine, you're missing the point. It's like you, you it's me or other people that specifically me, but other people have taken the piss out of you, and you, 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 it's, you, you've kind of not made a fool out of everyone. Yeah, I know you're trying to, you know, for instance, I, I, everyone's, I'm sure everyone's seen the video I did. It's very, very short. Um, that is how you make the point. You know what I mean? It's like if someone, if someone said to me, just say someone said to me, uh, oh, Matt, you're skipping leg day, right? I'd be like, what do you mean? It's like, oh, well, you just lift the engine, you pussy. And I'd be like, all right, then. And then I'd do a video going, I just pick, look, I can just pick the engine up. There's another reason why I didn't, just say. And I could say, do you know what, I've got a fuck knee, right? I've got a fuck knee, it's as simple as that. But I lifted it, and you, get, you see what, what, what I'm getting at, it's just like, for fuck's sake. It's very important. And with my now warmed up leg muscles, I can leg press a ramp. You used to put the press up your hand in your pocket with the skinniest ankles I've ever fucking seen. You got rem the fucking ankle leg there. Don't skip it. You got fires like a woman to its max height position, which puts it level with the table that support. Here's an example. There's a woman. What's the engine? Plan is we're going to try and usher the engine onto that mat. Got a trolley jack down on the floor there. Oh, we're going to order a proper like scissor lift to lift the engine up, but it was like three to four days until. I oh well. There's this thing called patience. Why don't you just wait? I received it and I want to get this engine in today. Yeah, I've got it underneath. Arbitrarily just did it. I want to get the video done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not as easy, doesn't it? <laughs> it takes hard work. You see, you, number one is you used your missus. You know what I mean? You 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 moved. You used your missus to move it, and all you did was barely lift it and push it. That's all you did. So the point that you were making is pointless. Oh, and you painted hammerite on that um, valve cover. <laughs> Here we were trying to get the trolley jack underneath the engine. It's not moving, mate. that. You mean that the little tiny wheels on that trolley jack won't move on that towel? Who would have thought? We eventually managed to get the jack under the engine in order for it to lift it. Mate, you done that all in your head. It didn't do anything. We're getting close. 
it's all Arik. It's all look at that tight ass. It's almost like he's just you just stand there in front of the camera so everyone can see your ass. Mate, you've done that all year. It didn't do anything. We're getting close. It's a smashing ass, by the way. It's a smashing ass. Let's all let's all have ass appreciation day. Mate, you've done that all year. It didn't do anything. We're getting close. You've got to remember, right? Someone might say you don't talk about his missus. Dude, it's in the if it's in the video, right? If it's in the video, then I, we, it, it's it's open for discussion. If you don't want people to look at your missus' ass, don't put your missus' ass in front of the fucking video. It's as simple as that. Essentially, we need to get that lined up to that there. But the trolley jack was not going to work. No, that's I'd say that's more you. You're not working. I might have come up with a genius potential solution here. I'm saying potential, but I'm I can see it. But let me explain what I'm thinking. That engine is sitting as it is, no assistance. It sits pretty flat. Now this lifts out of the bike lift and I'm thinking I'm thinking if I shimmy this engine this way right the bike isn't actually that heavy when there's no engine attached to it it's weird it's probably about the same weight it's probably about the same weight maybe even more now I think about it it's probably but I'd guess the the chassis there the rolling chassis and the engine are about the same weight oh but the problem we might have, I just thought, when we do... She's like, don't fucking point at me. <laughs> the bolt's up to the engine. How do we then lift the bike? So basically, I was going to drop the bike down through that gap, right? Supporting the wheel. And then I can move, I can hold the bike and lift it left to right. But then how are we going to... I mean, I guess the engine is oh. on... Ah, oh, I know what I could do. Yeah, oh, sorry. I know what you... Get some picture hooks. Screw them into the ceiling. Get some boot laces. We'll string six sets of bootlaces together, wrap it around the wheel, and then we can make a pulley system. <laughs> you can do it. Or elastic bands. Basically, you came up with this suggestion. You, I, It was all your idea. Now I'm thinking, so look, no, sorry, you're thinking. I mean, you're thinking, yeah? So when it's all bolted up, we can drop, you can drop your idea, yeah. drop the ramp down to floor level, right. and then the wheel will obviously, hopefully, it will all, yeah, maybe. Should we try it? could go terribly wrong. I'm sorry if this goes wrong. If it goes wrong, it's your idea anyway, so. She is the smart one. Also, I just want to say, this is why you love watching this channel. So, if you've watched up until this point, and you like a bit of a laugh, and you want to watch a beginner like me, struggle, oh, and you, sorry, you do all the work. See, it, I, it, 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 it's bitterness. Some people say it's not, it's bitterness it's like oh yeah 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 fucking you do all the work it's like but you don't you you send all this shit to other people to do and then what you do is is you wreck shit <laughs> and she does this is her idea she did help you lift it she does seem to do all the work and not only that is every time we've seen you move something she's the one giving you the instructions because you've been a dumbass <laughs> then hit the subscribe button follow along it's all good fun just hold the engine in place here and we'll go down this slowly, right? Yeah. Right, so I'll show you something that happened here. You can always tell. So as he's tipping this, you know what's going to happen, don't you? What's going to happen is, is that these, these little plates, these little L brackets, they're going to slip because it's just gravity that's holding them on, right? It's just basically the, the weight of the bike. And they're going to slip, but there's an edit. Watch the edit. See, that edit? It's like, that edit wasn't for time's sake. You missed out three seconds. It's because it nearly slipped off, and he's like, oh, my God. Then I had to re-grab it and start again. <clears throat> It's all good fun was aimed at you, man. I'm just, this entire video is pretty much aimed at me. Oh, jeez. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. That's a good thing you told her what was going on, isn't it? <laughs> I remember the floor idea. It's like the rest of the frame is there. That's dropping through. That's it, mate. Mate, we have got this. Fun, 
Yeah, keep going. Do, do you know what? Oh, I also, this is just a personal thing. It's got nothing to do with anything, really. I hate people who call their missus mate. It's like fucking hellfire. It's, it, I just don't like it. Do you know what this is called? Been a twat. This is work smarter, not harder. <laughs> like, oh look, there's a cam, there's a there's a cam cap there I can break a bolt in. Oh, look, there's an exhaust that I can break a bolt in there. Oh look, there's a, a suspension mount, look a cush lever, look that's hitting the uh, the bike frame. The entire bike's resting on that. Oh look, there's a uh, a cylinder I can leave outside and rust away. You can see now the bike. Yeah, look, the bike. There's no weight to that, so I don't mind it sitting. On there's no weight on that. Apart from it's all weight on the bottom of the shock. But look how close we are now to that hole. So we don't have to go too far with the engine. Oh, there we go. There it is. Yeah, it's going to be tight, but it's still going to. Still going to fit. Do you know what I mean, you know when you know when it's tight, it still fits, eh? <laughs> See that? We have sex. <laughs> this is a PG channel, right? <laughs> You're the one who said it, dickhead. He's, he's, he's literally cabbage patch. He is quite stupid. Oh yes! That didn't break anything. Is that not like happen? That's gone too far. That's, yeah. That's... Oh, straight on the oil filter. Let's hope you haven't fucked anything, eh? Mate, we're, we're so close. <laughs> we are so close. Pegging, that's a good point. It could be. <laughs> Same mate between the sex, it seems to be a yes, it is a southern thing, and it does my fucking head in. Oh, it really does. It really, really does my head in. I want to watch that drop again because that's quite good. I do like a good drop. Oh, that's no, before that, isn't it? Oh, before then. What? Actually, did that filter move? <laughs> oh, yes, that filter did take a good bash, didn't it? Did you see it? <laughs> Let's get a slow motion of this bad boy. Uh, play speed. Here we go. Are you ready for this? This is a beauty. Oh yeah, it took the entire weight of the engine on that bad boy. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. It's alright, the bounce. The bounce. <laughs> right. oh, yes! Is that not meant to happen? That's gone too far. Is that not meant to happen? Oh no. Yeah, that's fine. Mate, we're, we're so close. <laughs> we are so close. I think that's something they also say in the bedroom about pegging. We are so close. We are so close. The oil filter was water cooled on later, so it's can't see. Yes, it is. So what you have is you have the oil filter there, but this big thing behind it that is a oil to water uh, heating matrix or exchange matrix or cooling matrix, whichever one you want to call them. So basically. Just has a loop of coolant that goes in it, and as the oil passes through it, it just it's just a cold region that helps cool the oil down. Um, but that's that's where it does it. Instead of piping it out to a oil filter, a uh, oil cooler, and all that jazz, it does the water instead. Uh, they're just they're just more compact. They save weight as well. Okay. Well, it's marginal, but they do. Something, something's stuck in it. All right, so I think the problem we are facing is your idiots is the powder coating. It's so thick, it just seems to be catching. Oh, the engine's gone through loads of heat cycles and now it just wants to twist a bit. It happens all the time. That is how close we currently are. Almost there. Almost there. A little tweak. What do you reckon, Obi? Fucking hell, what is that? Yeah, you come to help. Don't want to touch it because I'm oily. Do you know 
what this is. This is proof that you do all the work. <laughs> but it, I, I know you're laughing, but if you know, she's got a bit of a laugh going on where it's kind of like. Do you know what this is? I know. I know. He sits there going, "Fucking knobhead," says you do all the work, but she kind of watch her face. This is, this is proof that you do all the work. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, but I do. Careful. So yeah, as I've mentioned, work smarter, not harder. Oh, all right, Dad. God, it's, it's it's getting into Dell territory. Is this? It's getting into condescending prick territory. It's like, dude, you might want to write repeat that to yourself all the time. Like, like I, I I do try and think about this, right? I do try and think about this, where I'm like, um, do I do this? It's like, right, when I do a video, I'll be like, um, people have said this about this. Like, a, a, a video, let's just, just say, we'll, we'll talk about Hapik and, and, and Caustic Soda. It's like, some people do this, and it's like, why are you using all these household appliances and shit like that? And why are you using all these household chemicals and stuff? They're not any cheaper, and you can't control them, and you don't also know what's else in them. So, a better thing to do is to buy caustic soda as a as a, a neat, you know, sodium hydroxide as an actual neat product, and then just basically add that to water, so you can control the quantities, you control the what is it, and if you're unsure, you can sit there and experiment a bit, because all you want to do is just take the anodizing off, just say you wanted to do that. Um... And then I just think to myself, when I do these videos, am I telling people? I'm like, no, because what I do is I talk to my audience like this. Um, there are some retards out there. Um, let's have a look if this is true. Let's have a look at what this actually does, what they don't show you, etc., etc., etc. But the, these pearls of wisdom, these. You know what I mean? Is it's like, for instance, I'll turn around and say, people have asked me, I'll say, uh, one good thing you can do, right, is you, if you go on to your, your Fowlers and your um, MS, uh, your motors, Chinese motor spares, if you go on to uh, Revzilla, you go on to anywhere, you can go and get these bearings, right, but they cost a fucking fortune, right? You can actually find a lot of the time the numbers on the things. And if you go on the website like this, and this is what I'm doing, I'm doing a video saying, if you go on these websites, type in these numbers, sometimes you can find the same bearing, from just say an SKF or something like that, same bearing for a lot cheaper. So they don't, you know, they're trying to make a markup on it. Right? It can save you quite a lot of money. So that's a tip bit. That's a, a tip, a tips and tricks, or whatever, right? That's helping people try to do this stuff. But I don't, I don't think I do. I don't say like these pricks do, where it's this proper. You know what I mean? Like, oh, and this, 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 this'll do this. You know, don't be an idiot. Do this instead. You get what I mean? Work hard, not smart, kind of thing. It's just fuck off. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, God's sake. Ain't hard, is it? You know what I mean? It's like, but you're fucking it up in front of our eyes. <laughs> Check out the ramp coming down now and just watch this. This is glorious to watch. Look. Look at that. Are you watching? <laughs> I am a mechanic, all right? You don't. I know this is a joke. I don't agree just yet. You don't want to admit it, but I am, okay? Get over it. There is an engine in the bike. Look at you. It milk brilliant! <laughs> you fucking tosser. There is an engine. Oh, you see, oh that's an isolation switch. I thought it was an emergency stop. I was like, please, someone push it and turn him off. Fucking hell. In the Thunder Race. We're slowly but surely getting there, aren't we? A bike that nobody wants. A bike that's now got hammerite. It was better condition before you touched it. Because when you got it, the engine wasn't fucked. When you got it, it didn't have a hammerite rocker cover. When you got it, it's just like, oh, for fuck's sake. Come on, man. 
Oh. Me. I have got to say, I love this rap. He looks like a homosexual burglar. <laughs> That has made mince me. Well, okay, look. It didn't go quite to plan, but it made it a lot easier. And if we didn't powder coat the frame in certain places, then it would have gone in probably the first time round. But. You've never ever put an engine in a bike before. We've got an engine in the Thunder Race at least. So, we are making progress. And that's all that anyone cares about. It doesn't matter what you're making progress on. All that matters is that you do. Just like this twat. Oh, actually, before we go anywhere, before we start with this, whoever this guy is. And I say twat. I've never seen his videos. I say twat. You say, how can you say twat? The, the, simple, the simple reason is, is it's this bandwagon. You look at his channel, you know exactly what he's trying to do. I know exactly what he's trying to do is I've got well, my brain just turned off <laughs> I know what he's trying to do everyone knows what he's trying to do he's just trying to become a YouTuber because you just get to sit at home and make videos once a week and do fucking nothing it's like no what happened was right is when Jason from engineering when Jason from engineering explained when he was sat in his house in that Dim lit corner of his house. He looks like Jason went and found the, the, the shittiest lit part of his house. And just started drawing on a whiteboard as a teenager. He must have been like 20 or maybe even younger. When he started doing that, he didn't think, oh, I'll be able to go around the country and go to all these places and be invited to these things and do all these videos and blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? It's like... When I started, it wasn't. It was nothing to do with this. When I started doing this, it was like, oh, because you got to remember, when did YouTube start? When did you, when did YouTube be become a thing? Well, Del Boy started his videos in twenty nineteen, uh, twenty twelve, twenty twenty twelve, right? So, can anyone think of the earliest bike channel you can you know of? What is the earliest bike channel anyone can think of? Del Boy has got to be one of the earliest. No, 2002 wasn't when YouTube started, I don't think. It was the Janet Jackson thing. And we, we, you got to remember, what all people did then, you got to remember, when it started, 2005, like I say, it's, it's, a lot, it's not as old as you think. Uh, like this, this, this logo has only been used since fucking 2017. That's crazy. Um, so 2005, it was launched, but no one knew what it was. No one had heard about it. I think the first time that I ever heard of YouTube was probably 2007. I ever heard of it. By 2010, people started watching videos. Um, the workshop that chap has an old channel. Had a YouTube channel before YouTube. Milo. Yeah, that's true. Jake the Garden Snake has been around for a while. So how long has Jake been around for? I don't... I don't uh, so Del Boy's... My, Del Boy's the latest at 2000. you got to remember, it's not as long as you've had your channel. It's as long as you started doing videos. Because um, I remember, like, the first... Because I remember videos, like, 10 minutes long when YouTube first started. 10, 15 minutes long. That's the, the longest you could put up. Because it was a tiny service. It was nothing. You know what I mean? Um, Jake the Garden Nobbed. So, how long has Jake been doing his channel for? Right, Jake, <laughs> Jake used to have nearly a million subs. Um, where's the about thing? So, oldest video. 15 years ago. 15 years ago. When was this? 2008. God, it's going back, in it? But saying that, these aren't... 
Yeah, look, you see, 15 years old, this is a burnout and a burnout, and it's t 39 seconds and 25 seconds. 2010 was a video there. God, it looks like shit, doesn't it? I would say this is probably his first video. God, that sounds amazing. Who would watch this? There we go. Just riding around and out a little bit. I'm not going to go. This is a bit much. I'm riding a DR. Come out here way back a few years ago. Way back a few years Yeah, I'd say this is his first video, which is actually, weirdly enough, the same time as Dell. 2011. October 2011. And that was literally the first video Dell put up. Um, so... Jake the Gan, Todger and Della are about the same. 2010, I think, is the earliest you can really go. Um, I think that's basically it. And you look, a lot of these videos, like, that's 20 seconds. Um, 1 minute 48. These are just literally on, on his bike. You see, for years, look, it's like even... Yeah, it's just, a, is, it, is it the same shite? What I mean, it's like sound quality and everything. I'm playing with some shit, I can see it. Here? Yeah, you can hardly hear him. It's like, but yeah, it's about the same, it's about the same period. But you see, when when that, when that was going on, right, the, if, if, you, if you just look at Jake's videos there, none of it's chasing subs, none of it has in, intros, none of it has... These stupid thumbnails. It was just... I don't even think they had thumbnails back then. I think you just picked something randomly out of the video. Um, did you ever see any of the Street Fighter magazine videos? No. Brock's performance. Brock hasn't been going that long. His channel isn't that old. Um... Uh, oh, when did Spicy start? That's a good one, actually. When did Spicy start? I don't think it's longer than Dell. I don't think it's longer than Dell. You see, these... No, these... What I'm saying is, as a channel, right? Putting up videos of shit you did. Um, right, This is what I'd call a proper Brock video. This one, which is still 14 years ago. a sales pitch if anything I wouldn't call that a, a Brock video when's Brock's all these videos what I'm saying is it's the format you got you remember Jake has always driven around ridden around you know what I mean that's his is that's his things Baron Von Grumble no god no he hasn't been going that long but Brock um, I can't be asked typing out his name Uh, down in here, I've got a... Oh, I can't stand this twat. 11 years ago. So, no, it's not, not as... Like I say, that's about Dell's... It's a lovely, slushy, wet November morning. Although, saying that, though, that literally is... That video there literally is, as he started to go on, just... Oh, I can't stand the prick. I, let's just... I, I hope I never meet him. I hope I never, ever meet him. Um, cause I, I don't think I'll be able to tell, I, I, I just have to tell him how much of a cock he sounds. Anyway, <laughs> um, oh, who else is there? I think that's it. Basically that's it. As you can tell, there's like a 12 year barrier. There's like a, a, a 12 years ago was when, and, and like I say, do you think he's doing this for the views? I, I can't stand him, but. Morning. Security wise, f***ing hell. We've had four. Sports bikes nicked from work last year. So now we um, take about a hundred chains. Wants to go quicker than them. Um, I don't know how this got traction, I really don't, but. So they feel emasculated by that and then they think, oh, I'll um, 
I'm still a, I'm still a bad boy. I won't indicate. He's talking about the emasculation of people with indicator. Oh, that's, that's, all right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 there's there's some soy in there somewhere, but um, visor down as a forum was big pre YouTube. No, I don't care about that. I'm talking about you. <laughs> We're talking about YouTube videos. Spices verse video. That was it. Spices verse video was September 2010. Um, yeah. So Spices done it for a long, long time. He's one of the er longest ones. Um. Haha, ha, slagging off other YouTuber content while sitting wearing a ginger wig. Ah, right, someone did say this. It never actually dawned on me. It never actually dawned on me that there's one or two... Um, there's one or two uh, ginger lovers. Um, is this a ginger lover or is this somebody else? Oh, no, my God. You went to Skegness on a motorbike trip. Oh, look, that was my birthday. Well, fucking hell, you are interesting. Which way is that? Is that... I'm glad you put this on YouTube. <laughs> Can you stop wasting bandwidth? Fucking hell. Oh. We're all Jordanian. Yeah, like I said, I, th I think the, these, obviously all the people we know, the, the older people have been around, you know, for a long time. Um, but this is, this is, this is EMS JB05. This guy, he thought, ha, ah, slagging off all the YouTubers content while sitting wearing a ginger wig. I'm not wearing a ginger wig. Why would I be wearing a ginger wig now, you knobhead? It's like, for fuck's sake. We're watching your videos right now at the moment. It's absolutely amazing. Oh. I thought I'd put this on the YouTubes. you got to remember, this is 2018. This is not that long ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is like... This is like and what I'm saying is YouTube was a thing by in like 2018. Like people are making all sorts of videos. Fucking I was making all sorts of videos and you're doing this. I thought I'd put this on the YouTubes. Where's he gone? Is it is he is it Where's he gone? Where's our man gone here? Is uh Got some awesome videos. It's uh Oh no, you go to Squire's Cafe. Oh you do that, do you? Oh fucking hell. Jesus Christ alive. Oh, it's funny when people take the piss and then you see what they actually do and you're like, oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad you you would you you live in that life. Ah. Any road, um, coffee time. We'll see if if what's his face. I wish he actually put his name, not some weird amount of letters, because he can't. And dyslexia is hard. I know. I get M's. Where's M's? M's Jibo Five. Where's M's Jibo Five? Where have you gone, fella? Come on, say hi to everyone. As soon as though you want it to be a fucking gobshite. Let's let's let's, let's chat it out. You can come on the live stream if you got a microphone. You can come on. We can chat it out. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right, any road. <laughs> I'm not being funny. Dude, if you've got a microphone, plug it in. I'll put add you to Discord. We can sit and talk about your awesome videos and your awesome life. And you can call me a cunt man to my face. It'd be cool as fuck. Any road. Um, while he goes and quickly sorts out a microphone or whatever he's doing, uh, coffee time. So we'll be back in a second and we'll actually get onto this. Because there is actually a point I want to make about all this, which is... Um, We've had a bit of a Bikes of Rye detour, but it's more to talk about this, uh, where this is going to go, right? Because you've got to remember, what's going to happen is people are going to want to up each other. 
Like, for instance, Ginger with the bike on fire is really, really, really taking the piss. And what might happen, what I'm more worried about... Oh, actually, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's just go do a coffee, and then we will um, continue this discussion. <laughs> So, um, we should start a Dirty Garage Discord for us viewers. There already is one. <laughs> there already is one. I don't know if I can... Oh, I don't know it. So, if you go to one of my videos... Oh, let's, let's do the dreaded thing. If you go to one of my videos, nearly all of them... Um, I don't know. How do I even get to my channel? I don't even know that with your channel. So, fuck off that rubbish. Where's he gone? He's disappeared. So, oh, look, I'm live. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, so, if you go to... Just go to any... I don't know. Just pick a video randomly. Just pick the Brock the Cock one. That's quite funny. So, if you go to this... Four years ago. Four years ago, is that it? Um, sometimes I'm blown away, but sometimes... So, there's a thing here that says... Oh, it did. Original video, part two. It's it's just too fucking funny. Stickers video search. I don't think the video search works anymore, so I'll have to check that out and see what's going on. Videos, just pick. Maybe it's not that... Four years old isn't that old. Where's something more Modern? Modern? Modern. What am I thinking of? So in the in the comments. Oh, I know where it is. In the comments, there's a thing that says for. In the description, there's a thing that says forum thing. I see if I can. I see if I can find. Yeah. So it's this one. I don't know if I can paste this in the comments. We'll see. I should be able to paste links in my own comments. Surely. Surely. Can everyone see that? Can no one see that? But yes, it's not something I run. Um, it's not something I run. Other people... 
Um, expand, expand the info. I don't know if it's there or not. Um, yeah, if you can see that, there you go. So that's it. You just copy that. What is it? That's the... Well, I can do it. I can do it myself. <laughs> Check that out. Open link. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Oh, what have I just done? I've just nuked the chat. <laughs> Shit. No, not... Restore chat. Right. Pop out chat. <laughs> what have I done? Oh, I've broken it. Oh, don't do that. Yes, don't do that. Don't press... I thought it was going to open link in a new tab, but this is why. Um... Oh, moderators and channel account can post links. Thank God for that. Right, so yes, no one else can post links. I know that's the thing. Um, you can't post links. I was going to say, surely I can I can post my own links. So, that, yeah, I know it's broken. Just give me a second. Um, it's not that one. It's that one. There we go. Chat is restored. There we go. Oh, bloody computers. So, ooh, 10... That's euros. Thank you very much. Ten euros. I'm now absolutely loaded. That's amazing. Uh, you should always ask a question, or I, I'll get me to do something stupid or whatever. But no, put my finger up my bum. Well, I, actually, yes, you can do that because I can just say I'm doing it. Um, celebrate. Let's celebrate their first super on the live stream. Fuck off. Look at this gay stuff. Let's celebrate it. <laughs> you deleted it. I deleted what? I deleted what? Makes sense. Right, there we go. So the Discord. Oh, yeah, whatever. So, yeah, it's the Dirty Garage Guy Discord. There's 69 people online right now. And there's 1,255 members. Um. So, yes. Like I say, I do not run it. I, I very rarely go on there. Because it's a bit like sucking your own dick in it. I don't, uh, that's why I think anyway. Maybe people disagree, but I never really ever go on there, and the reason why is because, like I say, it's a bit weird. Um, it's a bit weird. It's it's something. It's not something I created, so it's a bit weird. Um, obviously, there's also the Dirty Garage uh, Facebook page, which people use to seem to like that as well. If you use it, you see, you, there's all these avenues, but I don't want to go and my Twitter and Instagram and check out my OnlyFans and check out. My Bebo, check out my MSN Messenger, check out my Telegram, check out my PO Box, check out my fucking paper cup on a what bit of bloody parcel string. You know what I mean? I I don't like doing all that shite, just because it. it I just think I think that most people go check out our Instagram, check out this, check out that. I think most of those places don't even actually maintain and follow them themselves unless they're like an entity like a proper business so if you like um what's it called now um uh, hammersmith industries you know they're a big they've got staff you know what i mean um so yeah it it, it is what it is you know what i mean um but anyway let's let's talk about let's let's get on to this crash damage thing so you want to get into YouTube, right? You've decided, I want to do YouTube. This guy, uh, one loser. Um, how long has he been doing it? Where's the, is it that? Is it that? Yeah, this is the, the new about. So he joined YouTube on the 26th of June, 2021. 2021. As, as far as... You, I'm concerned, that's instant. You know what I mean? What's that say? Got refund from PayPal. Thanks for ignoring all my messages. What are messages? What? Don't like sending stuff. People pay you money for either. What? Got refund from PayPal. Thanks for ignoring all my messages. What messages? Clive. It's a funny name. Clive, what messages? Obviously, it's not ignoring if I fucking haven't got them. Are you sure you got my email? Are you sure you got my uh, factory key ring? It's not ignoring you. What messages? There are no messages. 
Why did you contact me through email? Why does anyone use stuff properly? R mail. Email. Is R next day? It is. Right, email. If I go into my emails now, right, your name isn't there. I did. Right, okay. Clive Adams. Receive money. Factory. I'll put your address up. Uh, you have received a case. I haven't seen this. Literally, as you can see, it hasn't been read. Email given on PayPal. Buyer has stated that he's never received item until this case is closed. I've only just seen this. As you can tell, I've only just seen this. Where is this? Oh, it's deleted. It's deleted. I haven't seen that. That one's in inbox. I haven't even read it. So, oh, no. Yeah. So, it's been deleted, which means I've just... It's gone into the junk... It's gone into the junk folder. That's why it's been deleted. There you go. Well, you get your money refunded. You've only just looked... Dude, <laughs> listen to me. I've only just looked because how would I know... If it's been missed, it's been missed. That's it. That's it. I don't know what the fuck you're whinging at. Why don't you email me directly and say, if I got an email off Clive Adams saying, dude, I've got this, I've done this thing, blah, 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 but you haven't. You haven't bothered. So I don't know what you fucking want me to say. It's like this, right? You've done that. You haven't got it yet, right? Or you haven't got it. And then you've sent me an email which has gone into my junk. Is that not your email? It is. It has gone into my junk folder. And because it's older than fucking how many days, it, however many days it is or whatever it is, it's gone into the junk folder and it's been deleted. I, I have to delete my junk once every three or four days. I don't go through every single one of them. And all it said is services from bloody fucking PayPal. Do you know how many of them emails I get? I don't go through absolutely every single one. Right, and if you were that bothered, email email at eleven thought. Actually, yeah. Have you only just sent that email now? No, it's Friday at eleven forty. Is it this Friday? No, it's for twelfth of the twelfth of the first. You sent this yesterday. Yesterday, you raised a case, which is fine. I'm not bothered about that. But that's it. Look, this one is from the sixteenth of November. Just telling me that you've sent me that and factory, right? That's all you've sent me. Then I get this, which is you telling me yesterday you've raised a, a claim. I haven't even looked. It's it's gone in the junk folder and it's been deleted because that's the only thing where things get deleted. No, email was sent before. No, no, no. Friday, it says there. Fr can you see that? Here you can. It says Friday, 11.40. Then here it says the 12th of the 1st, which is yesterday. No, email was sent before. Well, where is it? I've searched your name. There's nothing here. <laughs> what do you want me to say? What you want me to say is this. It's like this. I'll send you your money back. What's your fucking problem? It, it's almost like you're trying to say that I'm doing something nefarious. It's like, fuck off. He's just asked, he's just decided to open a, he can do, that's fine, I'm, I'm fine with that. December I messaged, probably deleted in some junk mail, but, but that's what I'm saying. No, no, because it'd still be here, this is this is in deleted items, unless it's, no, no, because it deleted, it, it, it also, there's 552 emails in the fucking deleted items, it would be in there. Bet he's got the wrong email address or something. It doesn't matter. Not, not nefarious, just rubbish surface. Dude, I'm not a fucking shop, right? 
it it's just it, this is the thing, right? Is it's like <laughs> you know, I can't bother, Clive. You're unhappy. I get that. You're a precious little bitch. There's nothing I can do about it. Don't start coming here and start shouting about stuff. It's a fucking key ring. You get your money back. I've I've sent out a key ring. It's disappeared. So I've done the work. I've had to pay the postage. You're going to get your money back. What's your fucking problem? You know what I mean? Oh, I ain't got my factory key ring yet. That's because the factory key rings have to be made in batches because they have to get paid and all that shit. So some people have got them early. Some people are getting them later. Like literally... When was that post the last ones out? The last ones got posted out on what, Monday. Monday just gone. You know what I mean? It's um but regardless, I haven't seen an email, right? Because this is the thing. Imagine if I was like, Oh fuck Clive. Fuck Clive, I'll delete his email. But then fail to delete these. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just it's yeah, whatever. I, I, I do think it's funny you say it's a service. It's not a fucking service. It was a one-off. I said to people, I'm going to try and do them before Christmas, but didn't. Well, if it turns up, I'll send you your money. Well, like I say, I hope it fucking doesn't, and I'll give you your money back. If you're going to be a twat about it, it's a fucking key ring. I don't know why you're holding out for it so much. It's like you do understand that this is kind of like just a, a, a bit of a laugh backwards and forwards. It could get lost in the post, right? Like, one or two people sent me pictures of them trying to get out the letters. I tried to mitigate that the best I could, but, you know. Um, no, he can open a case. He can have his money back. I'm not bothered about that. It's not about that. He can open a case. He didn't have to talk to me beforehand. What I don't like is him coming here now and start saying, you haven't done this. It's like, well, this is the first I've heard of it, literally. Uh you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. It's like I say, I'm, I'm not, I'm not Tesco's. We're doing this for a reason. It was, you know, to raise funds for something you're going to see soon. Blah blah blah. If you believe that or not, I don't care. It's, it's whatever. Any road. Getting back to one um, L. Um, what's that say? I will, I will say Royal. Mail delivered some shit six days late to me yesterday. It happens all the time. Fucking. It's, it, yeah. Uh, yeah, but any road. Um, just coincidence you're live. I mentioned it, you started whinging and crying. Dude, go back a minute, go back a minute, go back a minute. Let's, 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 let's look how this happened. I'm not going to stick on this for long. Let's look how this happened. Right. Um, I can't see your name before then. So you come on. I, I'm on the live stream. You come on here and you like this. Don't like sending stuff people pay you money for either. Oh, oh, that sounds like someone's bitching. Got refund for PayPal. Thanks for ignoring all my messages. Puts handbag down. <laughs> Yeah. Oh Jesus Christ. It's like are you still going, dude. I'm just reading what you fucking wrote, you penis. Now fuck off. Any road. Um Sorry I hurt your feet oh, Clive, look, everyone thinks you're a bit been a prick, right? It's simple as that. There's a, a, a much easier way of going around it, but no, you wanted to be a dick about it. Any road, let's uh, let's ignore that turd and let's carry on. So one L, um, yeah, it's twenty twenty one. Holy fuck, he's just started. He's just started doing his videos. And uh, no, no, don't 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 boot him. I don't know I'm booting him. He can have his. He can whinge as much as he wants. Um, any road, and you, he's he's now going to run around and say, "No, that map's a knob." It's like, dude, look at what happened. Look at what happened. Right? I'm just sat here calling some of the twat a twat who actually is a twat. And then all of a sudden, you're on top, oh, top chat. Oh, maybe that's a problem. What was the one before that? I, I've, this is the thing, right? If, if you said something before that, why is it not loading before that? Oh. Well, I can't look any higher than that because it, it's not letting me. Live chat. Right. Uh, 
Uh, no, it's not letting me go any further than that for some reason. It's literally at the top of its stroke. <laughs> um. Yeah. So well, anyway, any road. It it, it 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 hurt your feelings, Clive. To be quite honest, let's let's be honest about that. Any road. Uh, did you manage to get the gold plated? The other ones. Uh, they're still out. So the guy, I think his name's Lewis or Liam, one of the two. Um, he is doing them. A cracking job. I've seen some of his other stuff. Um, and uh, yes. What what the hell was it? What were we talking about? Yes, any road. So um, I blanked again. It's early morning. I say early. It's not all. Uh, sounds like your butt hurt that Matt didn't pay enough attention to you. Oh, I thought we were talking about me then. Um, but yes, the uh, the 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 the, the gold plated ones. Uh, I I I know that he was absolutely swamped. Was this guy? Um, over Christmas. Uh, weirdly enough, I know he's a, I know he's a one man band. Uh, I've seen his work personally; it's very very good. And uh, I know he's been very very busy over Christmas, and I know he's taken a couple of weeks after Christmas. I sent them just before Christmas. He did tell me this, you know, and uh, yeah. So that's that. He um, he's he's it, the the. I've been told they'll arrive as soon as he can, which I'm fine. Like I said, there's no fucking rush for them. But uh, I did actually uh, sandblast and prep them and all that shit, and then I'm, I am wrapped them up and sent them out to him. So they they should come back. Because um, then he said, don't sandblast them. And I was like, oh, shit. I said, it's going to take, because he wants to make them smooth, so they, they come out smooth. I didn't think about that. Um, but... I might get two done. I might get two sets done. I might get the sandblasted ones, and um, so I said to him, just, just, just go plate these as they are sandblasted, and then I'll see how they turn out. And then, if not, I'll I'll polish them up. Can you de share his details on dirty uh, dirty garage if you see he's good? Uh, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Um, he only usually do well. Actually, no, he does big bits. He lives out at Liverpool or Manchester or wherever he is. I think it's Liverpool. Um, it's weird for Scouser putting gold on things and trying to instead of trying to lick it off. <laughs> Any road. Um, so yes, the problem is right. Is just say you're like this guy who started your channel in 2021 and you want to get into this whole bike building shit because it it makes mad views, right? It makes mad views and. Since 2021, he's got 11,000 subs. Um, he's trying to get mad, mad views. He's trying to get all this shit, right? And the whole point is they go out and buy these bikes. So you go out and buy a wreck bike. Now, what happens if you get halfway through this build, right, and you take the engine out, and then you realise that the chassis is cracked in two? Like really badly. And it's also split the cases, but not the way they're meant to be split. And you go, shit, this is a new chassis. This is a new bottom case, probably top case. This is fucked. All right. Or you just find something that's really, really expensive that's fucked. And... Most people don't have the money Ginger has access to. He can just keep on going. You know, like, fuck me. The 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 Brutale thing, he's just basically replaced. So you imagine if you do this, what do you do? And you're halfway through it. Do you go, oh, this is fucked, knowing that that isn't going to get the views? Or do you just put it together anyway and get it bodge repaired or whatever? Do you just do that? And that's the issue I have, right, is that what happens, I have not seen one of these yet where they've gone, this is too far. I've not seen one yet. Does anyone know, and this is for future reference, if you know of one where they've done this and they've got halfway through and realised it's too far gone, um, if you do know one of them, go on to the Dirty Garage guy 
Facebook page or my Facebook page, leave me a message with a link to the video of someone who has gone too far. Like they're in, like halfway through, you know, just say it's episode, you know, it's episodal. It's like they've got like halfway through. Um, and they've they've binned it. You know, I don't believe they exist, and that's worrying. What are the chances of all these bikes being these massive crashes, and none of them are actually beyond repair? You get what I mean? So let's see what this this see what this guy does. This is the worst bike I've ever bought in my life. Well, why did you do it then, you dickhead? It's almost like it's, this is the most minging girl girl I've ever slept with. Let's do a video on her. <laughs> But it's going to be the most fun as well. Two minutes. Well, that's that's more than two minutes there. <laughs> okay, goodbye, Mr. Motorcycle Truck Delivery Man, and thank you. Looks like a skip lorry for what is now my nightmare. Look at this thing, man. This is like a re I couldn't even stand it up because like the forks have actually fallen out. So look at that. The whole bottom triple has just ripped right off. So it's just torn right off. The frame is fine. The frame. What did there was someone in the comments who said, yeah, well, that's broke first. So and it's like, oh, that's how it works. I remember that. I remember that. Like. You know what, like, if you fall from a great height and you land on your, your feet and your legs are locked, right? It hasn't broken my shin. All right, it didn't snap my femur. Why is my neck broken? Why is my back broken? Why did I break a couple of ribs? It's like, I don't know. I don't know. Your legs should have given... Your legs got hit first. The front wheel is not quite round anymore. Um, it, there's not quite round and then there's bits of it missing. Yeah, where do I start? And Bin. Okay, hats on backwards, check. Rec Ducati, check. Welcome to the next build of 2023, a 959 Ducati Panigale Superbike, and this is well and truly ruined. Yeah, but you see, you've said that. But it won't be wrecked for long because this bike is going to look insane. We've gone out to our viewers, we've got 5,000 plus votes, and our winner is actually this titanium bronze theme with a 959 across it. It's going to look amazing. Oh, you see, that's what it's about. It's about what it looks like. Okay, so the good news is this bike does run. So check out this footage, and that's the reason I bought it. I know it's trashed, but at least I know the engine is good, and that's... Oh, that's a weird thing. Look at that. He showed you there, the video. Where's all the fairings gone? That's the reason I bought it. I know it's trashed, but at least I know the engine is good and that's the main thing. The engine's the most expensive. So worst case scenario, we would part this bike out if it if it wasn't worth building. But that's not the case. We oh, that's interesting. We are gonna build the bike. No, his, we, we found out his name is Kent, and it's obviously a Australian. But yes, his, his name is Kent, which is, yeah. It's weird though. It's still got it's it's basically the same thing. The, the same shit music. What I am interested in is, does he do anything about the chassis? That's all I care about. That's all I'd care about. It's like, it's, it's interesting if you look what's happened to the bike, right? If you look what's happened to the bike, the forks are out. They're not in. They're not been smashed in. Well, at least he took the tank off. I don't think Ginger didn't even get that far. 
Alright, see what he says. A bit concerned at first when I got the bike and it came off the truck and I thought, man, this bike is totally wrecked. But the more I dig into it, I, I actually think it's just dirty. So. Oh, right, yeah. See that? What is it in a man's mind where he goes... Something tells his eyes, this is fucked. And then, later, he's like, it's just dirt. Do you ever, like, take your bike out in, like, the winter or whatever, and you look at it covered in shit, and you go, this bike's fucked. <laughs> like, like mechanically, not sound. Oh, no, no, it's just the mud. It's <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. So, there's, like, a lot of cleaning that's needed. Most things have come off pretty easily so far. Well, that's because it looks like they're half uh, hanging off. So something weird is going on with this bike. All of the bolts on the rear uh, subframe, even the bolts are really hard to get to. Like you've got to, you've, you have to take all the plastics off just to get to those bolts. All those bolts were finger tight, if that. Most of them were loose, like quite literally just loose in your fingers. Okay, so aside from being totally scratched, I think this fork leg is potentially okay. I'll get it checked, I'll take it to, there's a local guy who actually uh, straightens up frames. I'll get him to check. Oh, does he know? The shock, uh, just to make sure it's okay. But if it's okay, probably 200 bucks, $220 on eBay, I'd say. What's his, his partner out? So I'll show you on the blackboard later, but one of my biggest goals with this build is to try and not spend as much money as I have previously. So um, by that, all the parts that come off it, if I can salvage, um, I'll do exactly that. I'll see if I can clean it up, get it ready, put it on eBay and try and make some money back. And hopefully uh, that money will then pay for a whole- Can we have some Dave Moss today, please? No. A whole bunch of nice blingy Italian parts to really- What well, has Dave Moss done something new? Because you've got to remember, Dave Moss is so... Things that are part of video series are videos, and things that are part of um, live streams are live streams. I just want to get to see this, the frame bit. Like, make this build fire. It's not a yank, he's Australian. <laughs> Do you remember? Literally the other side of the world. How hard it was for me to get the radiators out of the V2 that we just built. It was insanely painful, whereas... Because everything's broken on there. Hang about. You do this all the time and you've got a scissor stand and a log, but you don't have a front paddock stand. Are you kidding me? It all actually came out quite easily, but both... So are you doing more of Moss videos? The Moss videos have been done. I just need to edit them. These radiators are completely shot to pieces. I can't salvage anything. Maybe some of the rubber little bungs, but that's about it. Straighten them out. If you've got a radiator tree, you got a radiator tree, that'll, that'll, that'll sort that shit right out. He doesn't need a front pallet stand. He has a scissor and a log, that's very true. Where's I wanna to get to the chassis bit. What's he talking shit here? But I don't think it's genuine. So I don't think it's genuine Duca bike or CNC racing because it doesn't have like the normal little signature. Oh who cares? Uh, stamped in logo up the top there. So I think it might be like really cheap, cheap, cheap aftermarket stuff. So I might even replace it completely. You see this is the thing. If it's it's like oh it might be a clone. Does it do the same job? Is it a window with a bit of, well then leave it. Completely with OEM uh, face for that because I've got a spare one off the V2 and it should fit. If you look at the face of this one, it actually has the Duca bike stamp up the top there and it's a much, much nicer quality. Even just looking at the wheel and everything, it's like it's fully stamped and, and looks nice. If you fucking gear. So yeah, it's like 32 degrees here. It must be like over 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the- Ah, oh, you poor, you poor darling. Right, so, it's talking shite. Do you talk about his chassis at all? I know what you're thinking, you're thinking I suck. Hey, what's up guys? So welcome back to the channel, episode two of 
They completely destroyed. Oh, this is an episode two, is it? So I don't think you, I don't, I don't, I don't. Converts it back into the intake in the actual engine uh, to use it for um, combustion. I don't think you know anything about what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> no, he's got some forks. Let's see, let's see if he knows how to do some trees. It's not great. I oh, do, do, don't start reusing bearings. What's wrong with you? You remember, these bearings have been smashed up in this. We don't even know what state this is in. See, there's a ding in the tank, right? Okay, so I've just given this a good, clean... Uh, to be honest, it was actually not too bad. Just a little bit of grime in there. Oh, how did that get in there? So just checking the bearings that came off, along with the bearing race, it's actually... It's not great. That's how you measure wear as well, by the way. And concentricity. Like, I can, I can almost feel like it's it's not as smooth as it should be. Whether or not they've got flat spots, they develop them, I don't know, in the crash. Uh, so I'm going to use... The it doesn't develop flat spots in a crash. <laughs> these ones which came with the bottom triple and see if they do a better job. Oh, he calls them triples as well. Of course he does. Fucking hell. Either way, I think they need a clean. I can see some damage on there. Alright, so it's fine. It's fine. See, the problem is here is it's where is mounted to the engine? That's the problem. Fucking hell, one of these could be cracked. You just don't know. I just want to see if he does the Dave Moss method. That's tight, that's it. Yeah, it's the usual same shite, innit? Oh, just the usual same fucking rubbish. So, what was uh, Dave Moss? Dave Moss hasn't done anything new, has he? I thought he was septic. I thought Dave Moss was, was, was septic. Did someone say that he's been doing something new? <sighs> when was his last video? Three months ago. He's doing the ergonomic review of a 2011 Ducati 1200 Multistrada S. It's like, oh, Dave, you're a bit late, mate. That bike's well over. <laughs> that fucking bike's 13 years old. I don't know how many people want to know that. Uh, why do you get pain, fatigue, numb hands and general discomfort? It's just, that's pulling on it too hard. Brake fade. Random example. Motorbike set up. New Zealand. Uh, it's just, yeah, I don't know why. Um, I don't know why you'd want to... Is motorcycle suspension setup necessary? For road use, generally no. Your standard setups are fine. Uh, it just... Uh... Can the track day be saved? Uh, let's, let's listen to what is it's, it's three Please minutes. Subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. <laughs> the, the, the motorcycle performs the same all the time. Please don't hammer on this guy in the comments. Well, why did you put him, put a video? We're all here somewhere on the same learning curve. 
It's not working properly, so... I have oh! That's no good. Yeah. When did that stop working? I'm not sure. It was fine in the morning. And now it's not it's fine. Too soft, yeah. That's why I kind of break hard. I, I, w I wonder why. Well, it's obvious. Sure. <laughs> the brake fluid's pissed off somewhere. I don't know why you'd hammer on this guy either. Why would you hammer on him? See how it's all sucked in? You run out of fluid. <laughs> but has he? Because you've got to remember, you've got to fill the entire pipe as well. How has he run out of fluid? So, see how much water you've got in there? Oh, here we go. And that's got a bunch of water in it as well? Yeah, that's on the, that's on the atmosphere side, Dave. Oh. Oh, no, that's on the atmosphere side. So, uh, drawing time. Just in case you don't know, this is more of a, for people who obviously don't know. So what you have is you have a uh, reservoir like this, right? So basically it's just a tub. And in that tub, right, is you have a level of brake fluid that is going to go down over time. Right? As your brake pads wear out, this level is going to shrink. Now, when you fill up to the top, right, so when you have your brake fluid, I should do a more in-depth video about this, actually. Oops, undo, copy, paste. Oh. oh, I was nearly on, I was nearly got it right. I nearly got it all right. Copy, paste, there we go. So when your brake fluid's up here and you've got your cap on, all is good. But as this brake fluid goes down, this would create, if this was sealed, it would create a vacuum. So what we have instead is we have a um, pen. We have a diaphragm seal that can expand. It's that concertinaed seal. So generally it looks like this, right? As that like that, and what it does is it can expand into this. It can, it can unfold, and then this bit fills with the air. It's to equalise the pressure. So it's not trying to suck fluid up as with a vacuum. And then your cap on top of this, your cap on top of this goes up here. And then that little white plastic thing, which I can't do in white, obviously. Let's do it in green. The white plastic thing, if you notice, they have a little a little air gap, right? They have a little gap to allow air to bleed into here, right? To get into here. So basically, it's almost like a plastic cap like this. And then it usually comes in at the side, but basically... Oh, bloody hell, fire. But basically, all it is, is it's a tiny little window passage that, you know, does that. So it's a bleed. You know, all this is clamped together. But it's a little air bleed that allows air to get into here, to allow this thing to expand out into your brake fluid. So if you get condensation this side, right, if you get water... Oh, what the hell's... Ugh. You get water. Oh, it's a weird highlight. You get water here and here and here. It doesn't matter. It's in here that matters. You div. Oh, any road. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we're going to dry all that up because brake fluid attracts water. It doesn't attract water. Brake fluid sat here in a puddle going, Water, come this way. I have sweets. <laughs> Ah, oh, shit. Absorbs is different than attracts. So that shouldn't be sucked down like that. Right, is there any fluid on the bottom of it? And look at all the water that's in it. That's in that. That's the wrong side, Dave, you dickhead. How did it get in? How does it get in? That's a good question, Dave. How does it get in? It's in it. So, let's see if I can find one. Um, break master cylinder white seal? Is it 
is it a seal? Is it a cap? Right, so these things, see the little white inserts there? I don't know what you'd call them. Oh, I had it. It was a picture. The picture was there. There. So these things here, these little white things. So this is the expanding jobby. Sometimes, ah, you can see it. Oh, you can only just see it. Show me, show me that. So sometimes it's not in the white seal. You see that little, you can only just see it. There's a little niggle. There's a little passage there. That little passage there is the bleed, right? That's what it is there. And a lot of the times you get some of these inserts here and they have a similar thing. Um, oh, make it in big in it. There we go. So that's the seals. On some of these, there's a little hole in the corner or there's a little bleed or there's a little hole in the middle. And if you look in your actual casting, there's a little passage where it just seeps down the side there, like where my mouse is now. Ugh. I'll, 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 literally, I'll literally do a video on it because I've got some master cylinders and stuff I can show people because there's obviously a few kicking around. Um, so I can literally show that. They all have them, they all have bleeds. In these, they have a little tiny hole in the cap. How do you get in? Because it does. Because it does? Oh, awesome, Dave, you fucking idiot. Doesn't know what he's talking about. How do you get in? Because it does. So, one of the things with brakes is... You see, this is, this, this, this is the problem. Dave... All of these years, all of these years doesn't know how this works. He has no idea how this works. Right? All of these years, here he is, right, telling this young kid, the young kid's great, he's like this, how does he get in there? I thought this was, I thought, I thought this was sealed. So, you've got a young lad here, this is the young generation, right, been inquisitive and he's been bullshitted and it's, it's, fuck this annoys me more than anything this really fucking annoys me because this is just how people become yeah because they just get fucked off like this it's a very good yeah next teacher exactly it's a very good this is an excellent example i'm going to use this in a video somewhere this is a very good example of the people you know people say the kids don't want to know it's bullshit they do they do of course they do look at this kid he's like straight away he hasn't just sat there he's come up to dave who's meant to be an expert because he's got this trailer look he's listening right he's listening to the old bastard talk and he's like um well how just so i can maybe stop this or just so i know how it works or what there's like it just does mate just fucking just trust me you got to replace this fluid regularly, and you got to get in here and soak all this water up and get it out. No, it doesn't matter. It can stay there. It doesn't fucking matter. All of it. That's what we call a seal for a reason. Because otherwise it's going in here. When you do that, and that brake fluid's old enough, then the brake lever comes to the bar when everything gets... I don't know why you're pacing that. Over time, it becomes more corrupted with water as it's hyd hygroscopic. It absorbs water over time. Why have you put over time twice? It's hot. How old's that brake fluid? It's like, oh, what's he talking about? Because otherwise it's going in here. When you do that, and that brake fluid's old enough, then the brake lever comes to the bar when everything gets hot. So, what, Dave? You're talking shite again. So, one of the things with brakes is you got to replace this fluid regularly. Yeah, that's true. Every about every two years. And you got to get in here and soak all this water up and get it out. You do you do that when you replace it, but you don't have to get in there like every week or something. Actually, you're making things worse. All of it, because otherwise it's going in here. It's not. That's why it's called a seal, Dave. You're actually letting more moisture in now. When you do that, and that brake fluid's old enough, then the brake lever comes to the bar when everything gets hot. No, when it gets hot, the brake fluid expands. You actually increase the pressure, but whatever. How old's that brake fluid? Look how brown it is. Yeah. It's not good, right? So, you can guarantee that's old fluid that needs changing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so the fluid's not too low then, because look, Dave's just put the cap back on. So why is the brake? We didn't see any of it. I ain't seen it go up to the bar. I ain't seen anything. 
Because once it gets hot, it goes to the bar. What? Dave, what are you talking about? So you should kind of fit. Get your brake fluid changed. Now, if you do this several times, right? Oh my god! <laughs> Wow, no, I think maybe a brake line's gone, Dave, or something. It breaks no problem. If you do it gently, it comes all the way back. Yeah. What? So the brake fluid is too thin. Oh, I can see it. No, Dave, Dave, you're talking shite. Look, look, look at this, right? You can see the fluid. Do it gently, it comes all the way back. Yeah. So the brake fluid is too thin. No, he's got he's got enough brake fluid in there. It's actually above the minimum line. What the fuck is going on? When it's hot. Check the thickness of your brake. Dave, shut up. Another, just another one. Did the beef ones all go out? They have done uh, the ones. The first lot that went out was all the UK ones. The second lot that went out were all the foreign ones. So if you're a foreigner, it's going to take longer. It's just going to take longer. But they went out just before Christmas. I have it showing you I need to be changed. What? No problem. Everything is very nice here. Okay. You're doing very well. His brakes aren't working. For learning, from what you learned on Saturday and then learning the motorcycle, you're on the gas here. So you're doing very well in the corners of being over and driving the bike through the corner. As Dave, stop, just stop bullshitting him. So the tyre wear shows you're riding very well. Just be cognizant of your brakes as they start to fade, yeah. then you come off. Because if a situation happens, you got nothing. Yeah, I have to wait, break way earlier now. Yeah. So be diligent, but that brake fluid needs to be changed okay. tomorrow. Yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Okay. All right. What? What? What do people say? Good man helping out the new rider. He didn't. Good advice. Who are these people? What you don't know can kill you. It's all right. Dave didn't tell him anything. Beyond swapping fluid, I highly recommend upgrading large and master cylinder. Shut up. His brakes don't work. Why aren't his brakes working? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Oh, Banana Brooks, you've already put it, look. this is, You've already been in here, look. Look. How does air get in? Because it does. What a teacher. What's, oh, what's the replies? Oh, no, he's just deleted the replies. Look, Dave, you fucking asshole. Next time a kid... Next time... These are four months ago, so this isn't now. Next time a kid wonders how the water got in, tell them water comes in as air moisture. It's moisture, you don't need to put air. Individual H2O molecules in a gas state together with the water, air we breathe. I don't know why you're about to fucking suck in your own dick here. When surface cools down to the meteorological dew point, for fuck's sake, the water in the air precipitates into droplets. It's condensation, but whatever. Precipitates out, yeah, you can say that, but... That's dropping out a solution is more precipitate. But yeah, all right, I'll give you that. Into droplets and puddles, just like morning dew. It didn't splash in there, as the kid might think. Why did the kid think it was... Where did you get that shit from? Fuck off with your shit comment. I bought some race prep forks and brakes. I don't know why you just... Uh, just, just someone randomly just says random shit. Um... Tech inspection. It's not up to them to make sure your fucking brakes work. There are two technical things to mention about the hydrophilic behaviour of brake fluid. Uh, hydrophilic loves water, so it's even able to get bad if you leave it 
to the air for too long. If it soaks up too much water, the boiling point rapidly decreases and leads to literally cooking your fluid in your hard on the bricks. It's probably done for a reason, which is probably done for a reason. Not good because cooking means water separates into hydrogen and oxygen. If you think you are getting hot enough in your brake lines to separate hydrogen from oxygen, then you're a fucking idiot. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, Jesus. Hygroscopic. Hydrophilic. There's a, an argument which one you want to use. Yes, absolutely right. Uh, messed up the terms. Well, it's weird because you do this big diatribe of 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 saying all this like you 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 make a bullet point and then say oh yeah i got the wrong term <laughs> as a german it's like no dude it's fuck off right it, it's... people think it's hydroscopic and i totally understand why right i ho totally get why people think it's that um you know it, it's not something that's common parlance i totally get that uh, it's just, it's just, it's, it's fucking, oh, Jesus Christ. It's just shit in it. What level is that? Sorry, it's not going to tell you. You can, you have to see it. You have to go out your way to fucking, why? I would have changed, I thought this, I would have changed his fluid on the spot for free. It takes two minutes. There's not going to do that. This bike is not safe to ride. There, there you go in the parking lot. Good point. A couple of months ago, I witnessed a fatal accident at a track day here in Italy. Don't care about that. People, it could be for all sorts of reasons. A rider collided with another one because the brake fluid on his bike was too old. Prove it. I, I do. Anecdotal stories are worth fuck all. What happened? We, this is why I like videos because we can physically see. Um, if you break hard enough, vision occurs. I know. It's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, fuck me. That was good. What happens is that humidity is already in the fluid from the moment you open the bottle. Yes, but it's the amount. Right, so... Picture time. So, let's just say you've got a bottle. Right? This is your bottle. My crude bottle. This is your bowl, right? And you open it, <gasps> and then the atmosphere gets in, right? That bastard atmosphere. The bottle's like this. You got to remember it was bottled in a factory as well. Oh, that might be humidity controlled, but it's bottled like this. And then the air gets in, and then five minutes later, just say because you're really slow, because you're Tim, you put the bottle back on like that, right? How much air is in there? So let's just, we'll, we'll, we'll make the lid green because it's a green bottle. And then we'll make the air inside here blue there. How much is in there? And how much water is actually in that bo in that air there? Right? So you've got to work out your volume, which is easy to do. Right? You can easily do that. You say, right, there's this much fluid. And then you pour all the fluid out. And then you fill it with water and then measure the difference. You know what I mean? Or you, you put water put water on top of your fluid, measure it, pour it all out, fill it with water. You can, there's loads of ways you can measure it, right? So, how much is in there and how much water is in that? You know what I mean? How much water is in there? This is the same thing. This is the exact same thing with fuel tanks and ethanol, right? You know, people are like, ah, oh, I've got a tank. I've got a tank up here full of fuel, right? Like that, just say... And it's like, oh, but the, 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 the air is good. The ethanol. It's like, but how much air and water is in here? How much water is in this much air? However much that is. I don't know. 20 cc's. How much water is in 20 cc's of air? All right? And how much of the, is that going to cause a problem? And what floats on what? Does brake fluid float on water? Does water float on brake fluid? You know, this kind of shite, right? So, you know, that... Just how much, you know what I mean? How much? It's fuck all, is the word. Uh, but we're going to... We'll, we'll literally measure this. I can literally measure this. If brake fluid dissolved that much moisture, we wouldn't fucking use it, would we, for fuck's sake? Exactly, you just use another fluid. 
Uh, I'm really building a set of carbs, and the manual says use thermal grease on the heater plug. What is a good alternative? Copper grease. Uh, it pretty much is. Copper grease is that you would call copper grease a thermal thing. It's just so... It, 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 it's like copper grease is used on O2 sensors. Um, what happens is the humidity already in the fluid from the moment you open the bottle. Over time, water and fluid separate. Water and fluid break fluid separate and the water which is heavier accumulates to the bottom is water heavier is water heavier i'm trying to think of density it probably is because what well, the density of water is one in it and then it's probably 0 0.7 or something is brake fluid i'm not entirely sure uh density of brake fluid you'd be there will be a data sheet density of of Break fluid. Yes, so it is. This will float on water um, because the density is. So what you'd be looking there, water is a thousand grams per cubic um, cubic millimeter. Not a fact. What? Oh no. What? No, this isn't right. Someone's got this wrong. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. It'd be a thousand grams per liter, right? Not per cubic centimeter. That's fucking wrong. Uh, where did you get that from? <laughs> oh shit! Because that, that Jesus, that's heavy. That's almost. That's almost. Is that what it says here? It's not a fact. It's one. No. Yeah, it's one point zero six zero. I hate Europeans with the commas instead of points, dickheads. Um, so no, it's heavier than water. This is this brake fluid is heavier than water. Because um, they put grams, centimetres, cube. Uh, yeah, why Why? Why did that? That says, that says it. Is that, is that its source? No, that's here, sorry. That's here. So no, I don't know where they got this from. This is wrong. Um, it is not 757 grams. That's almost a kilo per cc. It's like, holy shit. That's like the size of a sugar cube is a kilo. Fucking hell. <laughs> Even lead doesn't weigh that much. Oh, Jesus. Um, yeah, there we go. Oh, no, it's, so they're saying, so dot three is 0 0.89. So that's literally, that's lighter than water. It's, it depends who you ask. You go to boost brake, boost oil brake fluid, dot four. They say it's just over. So basically, is that, does that mean it's on the tipping point? Because this one... North Sea Lubricants, Brake Fluid, Dot 4. This one says it's over. So it's heavier than water. It's heavier than water. Um, oh, that's weird. So is it on the balancing point? Is it on the tipping point then? Castrol, Dot 4, they'll tell us. Castrol, Dot 4, Density. Yes, it's heavier. It's heavier than water. So no, the water should float to the top. I have never actually, never actually known which is which, which way it is. But yes, it is ever. It's literally on the tipping point. It is just a bit denser than water. Um, but that means that it'll float to the top regardless. Um, so yeah. Anyone else? Dupont brake fluids. Repsol. What do Repsol say there? I'm just I'm just picking different sources. Oh look, it says water water. Parts per million. Two thousand parts per million. Is brake fluid oil? No 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 no. Won't it just mix? Um No, I don't think so. I don't think there's a chemical bonding between the two. Hydroscopic just means that it's it's all about charges in it. It's all about what's prolific. Um, but that's not the same as chemically bonding to it. Um, but it's it, they, so Repsol's is just over again. So we're getting even closer. It's almost the same density, but it is ever so slightly denser. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's it's just on the limit. It's on the limit. It it smells like I'm gonna have to do some 
experiments of 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 water. But you got you got to remember, right? When you do when you do your brake test, you know your your brake test meter thing. They're like, oh, this is two percent water, three percent water. By volume, that's an awful lot. That's an awful lot, and that takes a long time to get there. You know what I mean? It 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 it's a long time. Ye you know, a year or two kind of thing. And it's like Dell tested is it's like oh it says three percent. It's like Dell that brake fluid's four years old, five years old. It's like that's a lot. You know what I mean? Um. So yeah, it's it it <laughs> it's not what Dave says. Uh, what's it say? Over time, water and fluid separate. The water is much heavier. No, see, this is the thing. This is someone talking shite again. Water is much heavier, uh, which is heavier, accumulates in the bottom parts of the system, the calipers. Well, not according to all the shit I can read. We can literally, I've got some brake fluid, brand new stuff, cash doll stuff. I can literally just put it in a, a jar and then just fill it half with brake fluid and half with water. We'll see what happens. But I'm pretty sure the brake fluid will go to the bottom. Uh, and it gets very... I might even like add some food colouring to the brake. Well, that's probably wouldn't... No, that's not going to work, is it? Uh, get uh, That gets very hot, causing water to evaporate. Vapour goes up through the brake lines, making... What do you mean goes... You see, this is someone talking shite. The water evaporates. You've got to remember, this water is fuck all, right? It evaporates and goes up through the lines. But you've got to remember, it's a pressure system. So water under pressure, right, has a higher, bo higher boiling point. Also, this is, the, this is the other thing, right, is that as the, water, as the temperature of the water goes up, right, it starts to expand, increasing the internal pressure of the system. So in other words, it's like a feedback loop of the more heat you put in, the more it pushes and the more it pushes, the more the bulk modulus of the fluid pushes. You're pulling the brakes as well, it pushes in higher pressure. Not only that is, I think brake lines go up to 2,000, is it 2,000 PSI? Something like that. Uh, it's like the, the, the standard that they all smash, right? So um, the brake, the, the recorded brake fluid measurements are about, 2000 psi when you pull hard which is what we care about we don't care about soft pulling um so you pull hard 2000 psi is what some of these things come up to which in hydraulic terms eh, it's nothing really um 2000 psi and that's what they have to be able to pass and when they actually do testing these brake lines blow well 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 after that you know what i mean like it's a factor of safety, like five, six, seven, ten, whatever. They can take an awful lot. And, um, yeah, you're not, you're not going to get to... Well, you could get to these pressures eventually, but then you're going to get into brake fluid boiling temperatures. Uh, but this is look what it says. It says, cause very hot, causes water to evaporate. The vapour goes up through the lines. No, it doesn't have to connect. It can be squidgy down at the bottom, dickhead. Making the lever spongy, and if it reaches the master cylinder, you'll have no brakes at all. Why would it? Why, if it reached the master cylinder, would you have no brakes at all? It's like you can make brakes work with brake fluid, uh, with water, which is something I also want to demonstrate as well. You replace your brake fluid with water, it works. It just then eats the shit out of everything over time. Uh, thanks for your post. I keep reminding riders to change brake fluid every 90 days. 90 days. He actually said 45, but who cares? Based on scientific research and data. Well, they're the same thing. Because um, <laughs> uh, you, you do research to gain data. But only those that read do so based on knowledge they acquired. Well, isn't that your job, meant to be the... You know what I mean? Why is this catalyst, catalyst reaction SWB... Uh, SBW, why is? Because this is this is this is him. This is Dave or whoever the other Dave, Pedo Dave. Uh, poor advice to get brakes fixed tomorrow. Very good point, actually. Sure, this is an occasion of brake pads need replacing, not just the fluid. Yeah, if the reservoir was full, then those brake pads were new. The rubber cups, along with the reservoir levels, indicate. Um, What's it say? The rubber cup along with the reservoir level indicates that you're almost out of friction material. No, no, there's loads of fluid in there. You don't know that until you look. 
there is an issue also but it wasn't at max extension adding more fluid can be an issue when you have new pads and you don't expect it to overfill a visual check and overall assessment is needed to be 100 percent sure of each component very true dave same with cleaning the calipers on a regular basis but you still bullshitted him i i, I don't understand um i want to do a thing right when i get a lathe when i get a a, a, a big lathe not a girly little shitty one um I want to put some discs on it, and I'll get some calipers, and we're going to run through different brake fluids, like all different types of brake fluids, um, and like 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 fucking chip pan oil and water, and you'll see what happens. We can set up the thermal camera, we can do all this shit, and we can go through what's what, because then we can literally spin it up and then put some proper load on the system, so things get hot, hot, hot. And the thing is, and I will make it clear in the video that. We are going to get hotter doing that test. Um, we're going to get hotter doing that test than we are in real life because you're not moving, so there's no airflow. As you can see from MotoGP stuff, airflow is very important for brakes. Um, oh, I just can't watch that one because I feel pain, fatigue, and numb. Um, basic how to as well. What's he doing? Oh my god. How many of you know exactly to the millimeter? Whatever. But it's research. Oh, is is how many of you? It's bullshitting more people like live. Are people paying to listen to this shite. You know exactly to the millimeter where your fork bottoms out. Good question. Why do I need to? And have marked it with a felt pen or a piece. Is a lift powerful enough to really torture the brakes? No one said torture. No one said torture. Who said torture? And number two is, uh, you get enough inertia, get going fast enough, yeah, you can, yeah. I'd say so. The tape. I don't. I, when you see these brake test videos, what do you think's doing it? What well, it's basically a lathe. So if you are doing a heavy braking exercise, I don't know who does heavy braking exercises, but he bottomed out. Everybody see that cable tie? Mm -hmm. If there's no black dot there to show where bottom out is, does it have any relevance? Is it worthless? <laughs> so unless I know where that is, where bottom is and mark it, what's the point of the cable tie? Other than I'm really good with my brakes. Well, no, the cable tie might be it's simple. You put a cable tie, I am bottoming out. Something needs to be something needs to be adjusted. So everybody can do this by themselves, depending on your knees and hips. You might have to ask some. We already watched this, haven't we? No, we haven't. else to do it for you. Well, we are. Side stands are very watch. useful. So Dave, if you can't see on the back. You watch Dave Moss talk shit loads of times. To stand up for a minute, and then you can sit down again. So if you stretch the bike out using the side stand. I'm going to tip it over. <laughs> measure from the end of the gold here down to the bottom of the chrome tube. And that's going to give me a total distance. So that distance, which I know what it is anyway, is 150 millimeters. Why didn't you tell us that before you measured it? Just so we could see. I'm saying that I could measure it before they all got here. It doesn't matter. Who cares? So, how many of you with your onus manual went? Okay. He's such a condescending prick to everyone, isn't he? It's great. So in the book... What he's selling is this. This is what he sells. You know, there's people pay him to come and give talks. I don't know why. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. It says I have 140 millimetres of travel. So where does the dot go? Who's the mathematician? Tim up. What? If I did that... And I'm practicing my braking. Am I going to get better? Sure. Well, how close now am I? What are you even talking about? To actually bottom in the suspension out 
if I've only got 10 mil up as my maximum. It's not much there, is there? So as you get better... Isn't he a mechanic or engineer or something? No, he's not. He's nobody. He's an English teacher who quit and decided to start doing this for some reason. ...and practice a skill, that cable tie is going to go further and further and further. And if you don't have the black dot to check where you are, because your skills are improving, when you come to that crisis and you do that, what comes next? That. Now you've got to let go. What? You don't have a choice. You've got to put the rear wheel down so you can get two sets of brakes working for you again. What are you talking about? So take away number one, which every single one of you can do with a tape measure and a pen. Year, make, model, and specs. Measure it extended. What is my bottom out? Right, why? Can you tell me that? Why? Why? What are we doing this for, Dave? Never put a cable tie on the left leg. Why? Because everyone can see it. You could walk across something and go, whose bike is this? You just paid it forward. What? <laughs> when did you last reset your cable tie? What? Is that bottoms? Where's your bottom out? No, no, so Dave, 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 Dave. The way it works is this. You go riding, if you think you're bottoming out, right, which can quite easily happen, Especially if you bought a second-hand bike, you don't know who's fucking put what preload on what, or if there's even any fucking oil in the forks, right? So you bottom out, you go, was that bottoming out? Did that feel like it bottomed out? So what you do is you get a cable tie, you put it up, right? You push down, until, or you get a ratchet strap, you pull down until you bottom out, and you say, that's where the cable tie is. That's where it literally bottoms out, because it doesn't swallow all of the entire stanchion, which is weird, it doesn't use the proper terminology, but whatever. So you let it stroke back out again, and you put the cable tie back, and you say, right, I know it was, you know, you can tell by eye. If you, if it's getting close, you don't want to be that close. So then what you do is you ride out, and then you do the thing again where you think it's bottoming out, and you have a look and you go, oh, no, no, it's miles away. Like I've got, you know, just say bottom out was like, I don't know, fucking 20 millimetres before you hit the actual, you know, fucking axle hanger thingy. I don't even know what you call them. The bottom of your stanchion thing. And then you've got that, right? And then you're miles away. You're like 40 mil away or you're 35 mil away. You're like fucking on miles away. So what is that feeling then? Because that feeling, I don't like it. You know what I mean? Am I bottoming out? Then you find out it's your fucking ABS. You know? <laughs> but you get what I mean? Or something. You find something out. That's what it's for. It's for you to... You don't just say, oh, go get a cable time, a brand new bike, and just so everyone can see it. <laughs> Mark. And that might be the end of the conversation but you could have just saved a life. How? You do realise you can have a bike with no suspension, right? And no one dies. You can remove the suspension. It feels like shite, but you can have no suspension. They exist. Push bikes exist. We all need that front end to work as well as possible. That's fair, eh? On, on, on the fucking road. On the road. Because that's all we got. Most of us don't have the brain power to put the rear on first before the front in a crisis. All right, cool. Dude, I need to stop. I'm not fucking around with rear brakes. Unless you practice that skill set over and over and over. In a crisis, in an emergency, someone comes out, you go, oh! as I'm going, oh! I'm putting on the rear brake. And then I'm adding the front brake in after that. It's like, why would you do that? Don't be a fucking idiot. So until you get that embedded, we're always going to go for the front. And we're always going to yank on it. This is why everyone should try and do a stoppy. Everyone should try and do a stoppy. Right? When you start trying to learn how to do it all this, because it feels weird. If no one's ever done it before, it feels fucking weird. It's the hardest thing to learn, I think. That's just my personal opinion. I know, I know people might like disagree or whatever. That's fine. I think doing a stoppy was the hardest thing to ever learn how to do. It's really, really, really fucking weird, right? It's it it it's really strange feeling. It it feels just everything's dodgy and wrong. And I think everyone should learn how to do it. I think everyone should learn how to do it. 
because it is a balancing act between traction and braking and your control of your brakes. If you can do one once successfully, the amount of feel and stuff you had to learn of your bike to get to just being able to do it once is enough training for you to get really good at your brakes. Because if you look at most people in these, you know, these dash cam dashboard camera videos where people um, crash, have you noticed that they never actually do, right? They never usually end up doing a stoppy. They end up folding the front. And the reason why is because they've gone full on, full brakes, and you're going far too fast for the traction of that tyre. So the wheel stops, it loses grip, and buff. That's it. You just lost it. It's just gone. Any steering angle you've got is which way you're going to fall. So if you've got half a degree to the right, you're just going to bit ditch it to the left. It's just that simple. And that's because you just snatch. snatch. It's like snatching a trigger. You snatch it and the thing jerks on you. It's exactly the same thing. So when you do that, that's what I think you need to learn how to do it. You know what I mean? You, have, you need to learn that when you... Oh, and it, your, your, your immediate response is just a snatch where it should be, oh, control. You get what I mean? And, yeah, I think I think you could, a lot of people would end up saving their bikes, saving crashes, saving all sorts. But uh, rear brake is hilarious. So that is by far the most important thing you can ever do in your motorcycling career with every bike you own. Bi it's not a career, it's not a fucking job. By far. What, what, Dave? Can, you, can, we, can we go back and get, this, this is the summary. And we're always gonna yank on it. If you get it wrong, it's usually hurts and it's expensive. Well, that's why you build up, because most people don't want to hurt themselves and get it wrong. So that's why you slowly build up. That's why you slowly, and that's what I'm saying. That's that is that is the the whole point, right? That's the whole point is that if you can just manage one ever, you do one successful one, right? And this is the thing: if you want to, you know, if people want to learn how to do that, go and get a fucking go and get like an ER five or a Bandit or something or anything like that. Yeah, any well, not an ER five, anything with twin discs on the front. If you got twin discs on the front, you'd be good. So you go and get a Honda horn, you go and get some shit, right? A winter wrecker. Don't do it in the winter, though, do it in the summer. You want you, you try and get yourself the best the best uh chance. You know, go to a car park somewhere, not far from your house, or you know, not in your street with the kids and stuff. Go somewhere where there's not people around on a Sunday or whatever. There's enough fucking room and all the rest of it, and just um you know, just give it a go. Give it a fucking go. Make sure you take a spare throttle cable with you. Ask me how I know. Uh, <laughs> I, I, we were clowning around, the proper clowning around. But um, yeah, it, it's it's you just slow. It, you, you are going to you, you gradually get there. So it's just like learning how to wheelie. You know, when you start doing power wheelies and you, nothing happens and nothing happens, and you peak it and it, oh, it jumps up a bit. Don't dive straight in. You know what I mean? Um, learn how to use brakes. Ride off road in gravel mud. I do not believe that whatsoever. That's not the fucking same thing. No, that's not. I, I don't believe that at all. That's not untrue, um, because you're talking a totally different medium. This is like, this is like I don't know, learning how to, I don't know, learn how to lick pussy by fucking assholes. It's not the same thing. Um, yeah, you should, you, like I say, I, I believe everyone should, if, if you want to learn something, you know, if you're into your bikes and stuff, you're like, I want to learn something new this year. I might literally want to do something new. You can ride forward and then just brake, 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 brake. Ooh, I can feel the all the way going to the front. Then you start to bomb it out. And they're like, right, that's where it is. That's the soft, because that's one of the best, That's one of the first things is to get that soft cushion on bottoming out, um, because the bike shouldn't really be able to hold up the entire bike on its front fork. And then you just, 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 and then you just keep on going like that, and you just push it a tiny, tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit, 
And if I reckon they should make it because they could even make a rig. This is the thing; they could even make a rig that catches you. You know, they've got them anti-slip skid things that they put on ABS testing bikes and stuff, where basically it's like some trolley wheels, some stabilizers. They could make a rig where people learn how to do stoppies, right? Where it basically the same kind of thing; it just catches you. You know what I mean? Uh, Brian six three six. Yes, he probably does. I don't know if I've seen it, actually. Uh, real men stop your gold. <laughs> no, real men stop your fucking garbage truck. <laughs> fucking bin lorry. That's a cunt to fucking stop you, that one. But um, no, I, I, I honestly believe... I, I believe people should push things more. I'm not one of these pussies who are like, oh, God, make sure you go the speed limit. Dodge speed cameras. That's what you should do. That's what we should all do. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, you should... I think learning how to wheelie is a good thing. I think learning how to do stoppies is a good thing. I think learning how to put your forehead, you know, people talk about getting knees down, fucking shut up. People talk about getting elbows down, fucking shut up. You should get your eyebrows down. If you can get your eyebrows down, then you, you, you've mastered stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I think people should do this. But anyway, we're getting back to Dave's lesson. So that is by far oh he hasn't he hasn't told us what is the the lesson and over and over so until you get that embedded we're always going to go for the front for a good reason weight transfer it's in front um the fact that the rear wheel's hopping off the floor the fact that your contact pressure of your tires the lowest yeah and we're always going to yank on it well no that's what you should that's what you should learn not to I'm going to go out and wheelie up and over a cow cop car now because Matt said so. I hope that makes sense. That seems a bit good. I thought I put now and cop together and came out with cow. <laughs> so that is by far the most important thing you can ever do in your motorcycling career with every bike you own. By far. Because that will always tell you I'm safe. I bet you, if you asked anybody right now, you asked Derek here, right, and Susanna here and Gillian here, you asked them, what did Dave just say? They'd be like, it's the most important lesson that you could learn in your motorcycle career. And I'd be like, what career? And number two, you're getting paid. And number two is, I'd say, what did he say, though? What, what, what is the most important lesson? I bet none of them could tell you. No glazed looks. Excellent. Second part, show of hands, how many changed their engine oil at 2,500 Ks? Too short? 5,000 Ks. Okay, 8,000. Now we're thinning out now. Over 10? Engineer? Or broke? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Engineer? is the difference between long chain and short chain molecules. Blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> but it's research. What? He's talking a lot, but nothing's actually been said. Where you find the information out. How many of you change your suspension oil every 6,000 kilometers? Oh. OK. That's a great question. Can you change it? <laughs> Fire that man. You know that owner's manual? It's got dots in it, hey, for stuff that needs to get done. Do you know where all the dots are? The weirdest thing is, when he just says this, if you don't know what he's talking about, what dots? What he meant to say is there's a service interval table that has a list of all the things you should do and when you should and how frequently you should do them, either mileage or years or whatever. And in each one, there's a dot that tells you that should be changed. So basically, after the first 500 miles or whatever, 1,000 kilometers, then it'll say, after 10,000 kilometers, and then it has loads of dots, this, 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 and this should be either inspected or changed. If no one knows what you're talking about, Dave, because these people might not, the bloke has just said, you can change your fork oil. So you're obviously dealing with right from the bottom to maybe the top. So explain. But you just talk, English teacher, talking shit. For stuff that needs to get done. 
Listen to how he describes this. Great question. Can you change it? So I'd explain this. In your service manual, there is a service interval table. It's basically just, you know, uh, what needs to be inspected and how often. And it'll have little black dots usually. This is how most manuals go. It'll have little dots telling you what should be inspected or changed at what interval. That's all it takes. You know that owner's manual? It's got dots in it, hey, for stuff that needs to get done. <laughs> Do you know where all the dots are? Okay, so there's, there's a valid point here. Is there? <laughs> Is there a dot for that? What are you talking about, Dave? Polka dots, what are we talking about? If there's not a dot, should you change it? It's a question. So if there isn't a dot, and you don't know, and you are doing the honest to God's truth, best maintenance you can on your bike, because you fulfill every dot in every column at the right odometer reading, you're dead on. But you're dead on because you're binary and literal. It says what? this, I'm going to do this, so I'm doing that. And that's perfect, because that's your bare minimum. But I hope from what we're doing tonight, you reconsider that. And those that are mechanical, Maybe you help somebody else do it. No, I'm, I'm organic, but whatever. What the fuck are you talking about? But more importantly, you actually, before doing anything, take a step back. People say, I'm not concise. <laughs> I'm not going off on tangents, but fucking hell. So everybody in the emergency services, the first thing they... He's got 172,000 subs, by the way. They do when they get to a situation? Survey the scene. So I step back and look at the motorcycle, look at the person I'm dealing with, and try and get a sense of what I've got. Then I'll take a step in by asking questions and looking at specific items. So how many of you have seen me go through a bike in YouTube? Great, those numbers are going to go through the roof because there's a lot of you that haven't. So at this <laughs> point, there's a resource there for you, because you're not going to remember everything I give you. It's going to be four things tonight. That's all I'm going to go through. But at that point... Isn't it weird? He's always dressed the same. You can always go there and find it out. How many have forks that are non-adjustable? It's about a quarter. OK. So you may feel this doesn't apply to you, and you're wrong. <laughs> Just... I'm going to turn up and pay some money just so Dale, Dave can tell me how much of a knob I am. <laughs> so how come he's known? Dave is like a shit stain. It, as far as I understand it, he just hung around at track days for long enough. Right, That's what he did. That's all he did. What it applies to is the fact that... He's basically a full-time Dell. So he just started talking shit and it just never changed. What the bike does... And I will give you an example at the end of several motorcycles where I've never put the key in. Zero kilometers and changed the fork core. But you'll understand why. Why would you do that? I know he thinks he's a Puritan, but please explain that to me. So. Usually this is where people go... I've not even seen Dave ride a bike. Quiet. So. This is a pass or fail situation. It is not an hmm. Or oh. What are we talking? People a professional shit talker. No, he's not, because he's let, let's 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 give car salesmen stockbrokers, let's give them some um fucking I don't know, some respect, right? Because there are people out there who can really talk some shit, and my God, it sounds like they know what they're talking about. Like, fucking hell. But this isn't that. He hasn't said... He hasn't... It, so it's like a house, and the dots of the house, and then you're going to have this thing, and I keep on telling people, when I buy a first bike, didn't put a key in it whatsoever... And I was like, brake fluid is hydroscopic, um, or hygroscopic. It depends which terminology. If you're an engineer, you'll look at the numbers, and you will focus on... The... 
And the dots, now this is the thing, and the, I'm only going to tell you this three times, there are four specific things that the dots, and people like you are going to understand this, and you know, if you make this first step, and when you do this, see what I mean? It's kind of like that. What the fuck was that? You haven't said anything. It's like 40 seconds of talking. You haven't fucking said anything. It's just like, he's not professional at all. There are people who are so much better at this than he is. <laughs> or general hand gestures on your face. Don't do that. A fail is a bounce where it goes up and comes back over. Dave, 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 I know English is hard, but watch what you're doing with your hand and then you say the word up. Where it goes up. <laughs> As he points down. And then... And comes back over. That over? Oh, okay. I don't think you know what that means. That is an absolute fail. Are we clear? No. No. <laughs> and we're going to make the entire live stream this. I'm sorry. But what would... What? Uh, what? Let me see if I can decipher this bullshit. On your face. Let me, let me see if we can decipher this together. It is not an... Mm. Or... Oh. It's just making noises now. It's just making noises. Or general hand gestures on your face. Don't do that. A fail is... So a fail... A bounce... A bounce. Where it goes up. It goes up. I don't know what he means now. Does he mean down? Or up? I don't understand. And comes back over. And comes back. We're talking about the suspension. We're talking about the front forks, over Dave. So he says a fail is a bounce that comes up, pointed down, and then goes back over. I don't know what that means. That is an absolute fail. Right, so we've got that. He, is he Australian? Unfortunately, no, he's not. He's, he's a cockney twat. Um, I, I, I don't... Up towards the ground. <laughs> I don't know what he means. And then he says... Are we clear? <laughs> he means the rebound is too soft. You don't fucking know that. Explain that to me. Explain how all that means what he just said. It's a complete fail when we bounce and it goes up and then over. Like, it... Over. I... I, I I, I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Is anybody feeling their vocal cords are quite strained at the moment and they don't want to contribute? <laughs> Just checking. So, your kitchen tap at home, where's maximum flow? And your kitchen tap at home, where's maximum flow? Don't BS me. Where is it? <laughs> BS. How many of you have done a flow study to know exactly where that position is that maximum flow is reached? <laughs> Dave, shut up! It's probably somewhere in the middle, usually. Okay. On a motorcycle, we need to know, and it's something called range. Oh. So, so maximum flow is range. Okay. When I bounce it, I'm going to bounce it three separate times. It best be three, Dave. For now, you can be quiet. Then observe, but count the number of bounces and... Is he just... Now, just fucking shut up and and count. See if... Thought he's a mank. Oh, mank, whatever, I don't fucking know. Who cares? He's a cunt. Yes, he might be a mank, actually. Sorry, I'm getting confused with all the other spastics. You can get it roughly accurate in your head. And that side won't be able to see much. So let's do that. I'm going to use this as a demo bike. So I went and got the most clumsy, overladen bike that's difficult to see what's going on. I could. There's some nakeds behind. Look, there's these bikes here with very simple suspension. This you could have used anything, but no, fucking this one. What a turd. Ready? I don't know. Are we? Bounce number one. But hang about, you're pulling. Like, if you notice, he's pulling up. He's not bouncing it. It's not what I'd call bouncing. So let's do that. Ready? No, he's not American. He's, he lives in America. He's not American. I, I know for a fact he's not American. 
Bounce number one. But you're pulling up as you throw your weight forward. What did that prove? Right. How many say five? What? Thank you, Jim. How many are on the fence about five? Four to me. <laughs> so most people, four to five? Oh, we're talking about how, how much it bounced. What's that got to do with anything? Everybody say three. Okay. So then one last time. Oh, I probably wasn't the initial. So three to four becomes pretty apparent. You're wrong, people. You're wrong. 40% of all fatalities on a motorcycle are single motorcycle accidents. I think it's higher than that, but whatever. And loss of control going into a corner. I don't believe that. This is shit. He said 40%. Uh, motorcycle accidents. It depends where he's talking. All right. Single vehicle. There we go. Um, where's this? Where's this? Left left turn accidents are more. There's more left turns than there are right turns, which you would have thought maybe because of um, you know um, the more right-handed people than left. It might be actually extending the throttle as well. Maybe something to do um, extending your brake because obviously your brake is on your left hand, uh, right hand. So when you turn left, you extend. Uh, it depends what it means by left turn as well. We're talking about junctions. This is why data matters. You see. Uh, crash caused by other vehicles. Oh no! Crash caused by other vehicles making a left turn. Probably because. And is this in America? Who fucking knows? It pro it's dot com. It probably is. Yeah. So caused by failure to observe collisions caused by lane switching, hazardous road conditions, driver recklessness. Oh, it's yeah. I I don't believe that. 40% of single motorcycle crashes are caused by incorrect underwear. It depends who, where he's even claiming that from, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. You, there, there will be statistics for single, because that's how they'll categorise everything. It'll be always single, you know, was another vehicle involved? It's like, no, lone vehicle, single vehicle, collision, blah, blah, blah. That, that, I understand that that st st statistic probably exists. Um, but yeah. This is in New Zealand, so has he got New Zealand numbers? How's that helping you, exactly? How many bounces? Three to four? How many of you ride through a corner, let's say 85 to 100K, and stay out of the gas for a while until you can see your exit, and then go? I, I don't know what the fuck this has got to do with bounces or anything. How many of you get on the gas and get out of it? And maybe get on it a little bit and wait and go. <laughs> Dave Moss once accidentally won a MotoGP race on his BMW 1250 GS because his suspension was so well set. <laughs> oh, shit, that was funny. How many of you use your brakes all the way around the corner until you can see where you're going and then accelerate? So, what you... Was, 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 was that a question? Was that rhetorical? Was there a point to that? You just saw, what does that mean in the corner? It means... Fork goes down, wheel turns. Yeah, right. Now what happens? Fork extends, bike wants to stand. I'm not done yet, I've got to do this three more times. What? No, D Dave, Dave, the forks are under compression, right? The forces, right? Oh, for God's sake. The normal force and what you'd call your accelerated, your accelerated force going through the corner is compressing the forks. They don't bounce. You see, when you push down, you're then releasing the force, so the spring then reacts and pushes out. Right, it tries, it's, def it's compressed, it's deformed, and it tries to flex back to normal. But you're releasing the force. In other words, get that bike and put it under a hydraulic, a hydraulic press. Force it down. As long as force is applied, it doesn't start bouncing, you div.
and then it'll settle out. Huh? Could everybody in this room do that push test? Most of you. Because all I'm doing is holding the brake. Can't tell you how many videos I've seen of people pushing the bike without the brake and chasing it. <laughs> and I get the bill. So at that do you? point, what is that doing to you in the corner? So when you look at motorcyclists that have been in it for a long while, this shoulder's really long. This shoulder's quite short. And that, if you look quietly and do it over a period of time. Look quietly. Did he just say look quietly? English teacher, by the way. And that, if you look quietly and do it over a period of time, is gospel. It's the funniest thing you'll ever see. But it's truthful. Because they spent their whole life getting control of the motorcycle. What are you talking about? So if this is a tap, that tap is wide open. And if it's wide open, it can do what it wants, agreed? Certainly does. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, Dave's farts are cocaine, all right? That's all I'm saying. I have 12 total clicks available to me in this specific fork. Right. So I am gonna go halfway. Range means, where does it start working? Well, that's not what you said range was before. I can't be asked finding it. What did he say range was before? He said something, something, and that's range. If this gives me four minimum bounces, is it working? No. So that adjustment was pointless. But, Dave, are you forcing it with the same amount of force each time? Because this, this is... The... <sighs> Let's talk engineering, Dave, because we know you're a master engineer. Let's talk about engineering, Dave, right? So you're basically trying to determine how this fork is going to behave under load, which you completely don't understand, and you've just got it completely wrong. But let's just say... Your snake oil has some kind of reality. It's based in something bollocks. <laughs> and I'm doing a Dave now. And so you're going to push down the forks. You're going to arbitrarily count how many bounces you think you can see. Okay, cool. Why does that matter? I don't know. Okay, let's move on from that rubbish. Let's just say, are you pushing with the same amount of vigor every time? Is it the same amount of force? Or is it... Because if you push more, it's going to bounce more, right? Because you, it's a spring, it oscillates. And then the damper section, the valving and the oil passing through it, is going to absorb some of that energy. So the more force you put in, right, the more energy you put into that spring, the longer it's going to bounce for and the more work the oil has to do. So what, And you've already adjusted it. You've already changed your parameters. So do we even know what's going on? So that adjustment was pointless. Well, I know this whole fucking thing's pointless, but whatever. Just like that or this with the tap. We choose the velocity of the water to fill the glass. No, we don't. But anywhere, any road. Your kids, like we did. We've gone from, velo we've gone from flow to velocity. Full on, face under, run out, not turn it off. But we need to know if we have adjustment, what do we do next? So if that doesn't work, which way do I go with the tap? The weirdest thing is there's this thing called testing, right? And it, it doesn't, it, with stuff like this, if you've got the machine here, right, you are not collecting data, right? So what you do is you ride it, and then you do two clicks out. I go, oh, that's worse, two clicks in. Right, that's back to normal. Right, for a bit longer, two clicks in. Oh, that's worse again. Two clicks back out. Or, well, that got a bit better. You get what I mean? It, it, the, the, the adjustment isn't... There's 12 clicks on there. The first five will kill you. The last three will kill you. And there's this sweet spot in the middle. 
You know what I mean? Is it's like it, it's your preference. It, it, whatever works for you is what matters because it's all instilling confidence in you. Because you, weirdly enough, break differently than most people. You weigh differently. You ride differently. You have different weight distribution. You have different brake pads. You have different tyres. You ride in different conditions. Some people might be lucky enough to ride around in Gran Canaria. Some people might be lucky enough to ride around in the Highlands of Scotland. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? It, it's all completely different. It's There are so many variables. It's a fucking joke. So the best way to test... This is what you do with engines, right? You think about it like this. They design these engines, they do all of these measurements, they do all of this manufacturing, they do all this tolerance checking, they do tolerance stacks, they do material testing, they do life, life, um, you know, testing, they do all of this reliability, repeatability, blah, 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 they do all this shit. And even then, they go, do you know what? This system is so complicated. Where's all the heat going? Where's all the waste heat going? Where's all the energy going? Where's all the torque? Where, what is actually going? Easy. Stick it on a dyno, find out. <laughs> right? That's it. As a one big package, it's such a complicated system. Let's just stick it on a dyno and see what happens. Right? And then let's give it to a guy and he rides it. For instance, they'll turn around and say, oh, we've worked out all of the grain, we've worked out all of the weave direction and all of the stress and tension and... Uh, all of the three-dimensional strain on this uh, carbon fiber chassis. They get to the riders of MotoGP. They go, "This is shit. Don't like it. Feels rubbish." And then they just didn't bother. All that work, all that work, gone in the bin. Not gone in the bin, but you get what I mean. It all goes into the knowledge base. They remember all that shit, all the stuff they've worked out, and then that's it. But they go back to the alley frames, right? So that venture for now was a bit of a waste of time. And it's like, oh, oh, okay then. There are so many variables. With stuff like this and suspension and the dynamics of braking suspension, weight transfer, air resistance, traction, there are so many variables that you've just got to go with it in a generalized way. Not this rubbish. Come on. I need more. So, more. Do you why? Will always be clockwise. You've got to tell people why. What are you talking about? So we're all good on that, because sometimes people get confused with direction. So that Fucking... <laughs> Dave. There's three. Five bucks, anybody? No? Oh. He's fucking not funny either. You wouldn't leave your kids with him, would you? Nine out of 12. Nine out of 12. Now, this is where we say pass or fail. What was that? A bit more enthusiasm? Thank you. I have three clicks left. The odds aren't looking good for me, is it? So, let's... I don't know what, what we're going for. You haven't explained to anybody. Let's go two of the three. Now, what that means in real terms, everybody knows the shape of an ice cream cone. All right, yeah. Super sharp at the bottom. Super, sh super sharp. <sighs> that super sharp is going in a big hole. As you mow that ice cream cone into the hole, that gets smaller and, smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Oh my god, that sounds amazing. And to the oil screaming. That was that was the, that was the internet breaking. <laughs> Let's do that again. To the hole, that gets smaller and, smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And to the oil screaming, trying to get through. Does that make sense? Because that's the simplest analogy I can give. It's a valve. You can just tell people it's a valve, Dave. Review. Feel free to yell fail when it is appropriate. And that is appropriate when? After the first bounce. Agreed? Oh, come on. That went to the second bloody bounce. That's it. That's all I got. Now again, is there any change? So where's that ice cream cone in the hole? <laughs> it's 
up your ass. It's all in, eh? There's not much gap there. Correct. That's that's some very very stiff suspension right there, Dave. Correct. So what does that tell you about the ice cream cone? <laughs> or <laughs> too I say stiff. It's not the word you should use. It's just the amount of rebound you've got. But you get people get what that means when you when you say what they mean by stiff and, and not stiff. Sure. The stiffness of the spring is not changing, it's fine. One or the other, right? <laughs> exactly. So to be faster than Mark Marquez on a GS, I need to put a zip tie on only my right hand fork, bounce it till I don't bounce, line the dots and elongate one of my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Or the ice cream cone is one of those super cheap ones with the bottom cut off. So it doesn't drip all over here. It's a square one, because that exists too. So the part there is, when you're going into that corner and that breathing starts to slow down and the heart rate slows down and breathing out is too hard. We're talking about breathing now. And it's too hard to breathe. That's called dying, Dave. Because you keep sucking air in. That's not how lungs work, mate. You, 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 no. Are you holding on? And that's it. So the test will be get to a nice corner. 85 is for me. 100 all day long. Rain or snow, doesn't matter. On these... <laughs> it doesn't matter. Dude, this is New Zealand. It fucking matters. Roads. Because the chips chili was so aggressive. There's lots and lots of grip. Well, say that again. Say that again. Sorry. Sorry. What? For me, 100 all day long. Rain or snow, doesn't matter. Uh, Dave reckons that an 85 kilometer an hour corner is 100 kilometer an hour for him all day long. It doesn't matter on the conditions. It just doesn't matter what the conditions are. Rain, snow, snow, fucking snow. <laughs> on these roads because the chips chili are so aggressive the chip what is so aggressive i'm thinking you say the 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 stones in their tarmac is so aggressive i don't know what what that means rain or snow doesn't matter on these roads because the chips chili are so aggressive there's lots and lots of grip especially but, in the south island yeah. i'll open my hand up now if the bar pushes my hand back and then lets it go forward what's it doing Bouncing. What? Everybody here capable of that? But you have to ride for 20 minutes to get the oil hot before you test it. What happens if it's fucking freezing, Dave? Is 20 minutes going to do it? That makes sense? Yeah. For demonstration purposes, 100% correct. It, uh, some guys just asked a question again. If if you didn't hear what he said, right, the guy said so. Ba basically, as I can't word for word it because I know bits. Basically, what the guy said is, does the oil set? Does the settings change depending on the temperature? That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, you have to make oil adjustments in the cold. For demonstration purposes, 100% correct. What the fuck does that mean? It's a yes or no question, Dave. You gonna go ride this for me for half an hour? Oh, okay. Yeah, give me a here, dickhead. Fuck a bell and sit in here. Fuck, you know, although saying that, they're probably paid like $200 just to fucking sit here and listen to this cunt. But you're right, you're on the money. So it's an, that's an excellent question. Because hot oil is much thinner than cold oil. Not according to fucking Jake Gallagher, I haven't told you. And the longer you... And he's been on YouTube longer than you, Dave, and he's got more subscribers than you. <laughs> Leave it. How many have got 30K on their forks right now or more? Anyway, moving on. Yes. Let's... Right, so basically just ignored the question. It's much thinner than cold oil. Right. And the... Which means what? The longer you leave it, how many have got 30K on their forks right now or more? What? Anyway, moving on. Yes. Let's not, let's not go there. 
Right, so, so just so we're all caught up, this guy says to him, right, so your oil changes over time because it gets hotter. So he says, go and take it out for 30, 20 minutes to get the oil hot. Depends on temperature, right? Uh, like what I'm saying is that totally depends on temperature, right? Because if it's a nice warm day, you're going to get it warm really quick. If it's fucking two degrees outside, it's not going to get, it's going to take fucking forever, right? So. And he says, before you start doing these tests, I don't know why you're riding, because you're doing it here in front of everyone, so it doesn't make any sense. But regardless, he then says, the guy says to him, so does that mean then, because this is a good question, does that mean that we need to change the settings when oil gets hot and cold? The answer to that question is fucking no. You don't want to be pissing around like that. But, especially for <laughs> especially for roads, but whatever. You might have a winter setting, you might have a summer setting, if you're that kind of guy. A lot of people aren't. That kind of shit. But Dave then responds this way. Oh, okay. But you're right. You're on the money. So it's an, that's an excellent question. So the question is, do I need to change the settings if it's hot or cold? So the answer should be yes or no. And by how much? I'll give you an example kind of thing. But instead, we get this. Because hot oil is much thinner than cold oil. What does much mean? How cold? The fuck are you talking about? Generally speaking, you know what I mean? On an on a average, Dave, what we're talking here. And what does that mean to my settings, right? Do we get that? We get this. And the longer you leave it, how many have got 30K on their forks right now or more? The fuck has that got to do with anything? <laughs> he was talking about changing the settings your damper settings on your shocks due to temperature changes. And he's like, how many people got 30,000 miles on their shocks? Oh, no, fork oil. Dave, it's not the same question, dickhead. Anyway, moving on. Yes. Let's not, let's not go there. Everybody know what a lava lamp is? There's some young faces that may not. So you owed a lot. Take care of them tonight. <laughs> Later. Fucking Dave, who doesn't know what a lava lamp is? But you're riding a lava lamp. Old, really thick, cold oil that turns into tap water eventually. No, it doesn't. But number two is, we're still answering the question. So all of you, without adjusting anything on your bike, if you have adjustments, can go out on a 10 to 15 Celsius day. In the first 10 minutes, does it beat you up? After that, is there a period of... where everything's nice? And, and then it starts beating you up again. And that's your all viscosity going from goo to somewhat oil to tap water. So as you ride your bike over a period of time, even if you don't want to touch anything, how does the ride evolve? <laughs> and what's this going to tell me? The longer that oil's been in there, the bigger that window. So you're riding around on a bike, especially if you don't have any way of adjusting it, on something that is telling you how to behave. If you like that at home, more power to you. Enjoy. What is all of that? This? Uh-uh, I pay for this. This needs to do what I need it to do, and I only have two wheels, and I am completely vulnerable on this. Oh, God, he's one of them, is he? So if I can't get this under control, why am I riding the damn bike? How much is a bottle of fork oil? See, I know why the camera's so far away. The camera's so far away because they've got to do two things. It's bad framing. Basically, it should be cropped down to here, right? Making the image bigger. The problem is, is that he wants to get Dave in and also show you that people go to these seminars, right? People do do this. People go here. Actually, let's see. I want to quickly... Um... Bike motorcycle set. Let's see if we can find how much it costs. Because the internet's great for keeping records. It's just basically one giant record keeping thing. Just put that. Let's see if we can find it. Um. Facebook group. 
We'll try that one. I wonder if, you, if there's, I wonder if you lot get on it. <laughs> Let's see if we can find how much a ticket costs. Welcome to New Zealand. That's all they say. Oh, that's taking me straight to Dave. Don't miss our chance. We're ranching. In. Limited space is available. I think I've got it. I think I've got it. All right. Come on, Lord, you sack of shite. Tickets. Does it say how much it was? It says there, there's a link there. Tickets. It's probably just, I, I hope it just doesn't say sold out. Uh, <gasps> Running a tuning ride for 10 participants at valued at $200. Oh my god! You've got to be. This is this is for the future. Two hundred dollars. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. Twenty six people. Twenty six people. It's not free. It's, it's two hundred bucks. I've just found out. Wow! Wow! Spaces are limited. Oh, spaces for this free event are strictly limited. Get in there quick. But it's to sell tickets, isn't it? That's what it is. It's to sell tickets. Wow. So yeah, you, I think it, you go on that, and then he does this whole thing where, as part of his two, 2024 New Zealand tour, Dave Moss will be running a tuning ride. For ten participants living in Upper Hut, valued at two hundred. What is it? It says value that. It says ten. I think they've probably paid him to turn up. Um. No, it says value that. But continue. Actually, no, continue. I live in there. Yeah, I hold all these things. Let's just bullshit it. Um, confirm that I'm available. Me. Contact number. Email. Oh, really? I have to put my email. It probably has a thing where it knows. It can do that. Does it accept my phone number? What do you mean? Or less. Have I put too many ones? <laughs> uh, once you receive your information, get in contact with you to confirm your registration should be placed for our waiting list. Uh, I don't want to submit it further than that. I'm just pissing around. So yeah, it's a ride that's worth... Um... No, no, it's, it says value that. I don't think it actually is, there is no... This is just... It does say ride registration. I don't know. It says 10 people. Mm. Yeah. Does it have a link to Dave Moss on here? Does it actually have a, a link to Dave Moss's Dave Moss? <laughs> uh, five are interested and 21 are going. Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy, oh, York Clubbers Reunion at the Barbican, listen to some Hard House, <laughs> uh, shit, it's from 12 till 4, so it wasn't this, because he said tonight, that's 12 till 4, but yeah, any road? 30 bucks. How many are mechanical? Take wheels out. You're on your way. The sent video you, for this? Sent you a link in your DM. What's this for? Let's go find out what this is for. I'm releasing people's details now. DaveMostTuner.com. Is this, is this his thing? Hire Dave. Oh my God. 
hire Dave. I want to hire Dave. Oh, I'd love to hire Dave. He's travelled the world working motorcycle chassis and suspension since 1995. His primary focus has been on dirt, street and track and amateur and professional road races, which is basically all of motorbiking. Uh, is there any more? Like dirt, street, track and then ra road racing. That's all of them, isn't it not? He specialises in centre motorcycles, riders where tyre... Tire, Type of use, riding style and ability. How does he determine the riding style? I don't think he can do that. Also takes great deal of time explaining what he's done. He doesn't have to explain fucking anything. Dave's mission. He races two. He's got 2011, 2012 and 2013. 450 Superbike. It's weird that they call them Superbikes, Americans. Um, 2014 Superbike, second position of the 250 Championship. Uh, 2015 second in these 2016 why is he in 450 and 250 championships um, I'd like to see any kind of backing that up as well um, how long is this going on I don't know <laughs> oh actually no I do because I've got to fuck off for 3 o'clock um what classes does he provide? Seminars for new riders. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Less than two years. Experienced riders, three years plus. Who want to understand the basics of chassis, suspension and tyres for solo and two-up riding. $60 per person. No limit of... Well, there is a limit on attendees because you might not be able to fill them in the building. Bike setups. $40 per bike. Hands-on workshop for those with tools of regular base capable of removing and replacing wheels, brake pads, brake fluid. This class builds on number one of the basics of chassis. Blah, blah, blah. That's three hours at $100. Dave, you're cheap. You're really cheap. Suspension tuning focused at home. Theory on preload. Two stops on the ride loop. Different settings. Eight riders. $150 per person. Eight riders. That's nearly so it's about $1,000. You literally rent Dave out. This is amazing. If a small group of you want to take a better of a one-to-one -one ratio, the cost is $1,000 per day divided between each person. Uh, yeah. International travel costs. $250 per travel day times two days. Jesus Christ. Is that, is that a lot? Or is he just doing this? I cover my own flight... I cover my own flight economy class expenses as those are reimbursed. Hotel room or Airbnb, Airbnb costs reimbursements are provided. He seems cheap, doesn't he? I might rent him out and get Dave to come over. <laughs> I'm like, Dave, Dave, Dave. How does water get in there? He'd be like, it just does. I'd be like, well, that's bullshit. Let me tell you why. <laughs> oh, that's so fucking good. I love it. Right, it's coffee time. Um, coffee time, because I need a piss as well. And then we'll do a bit more Dave, and then we might get to tra might get to trailer. Might do a bit of Dell trailer. We'll do a bit more Dave. But uh, oh, it'd be so good to hire Dave. He won't do it though, obviously, because he knows I'm. A, he, he hates me, obviously, because I know how break the water gets into the top of reservoirs, and he doesn't. Coffee time. That's what that was.
dun, dun. I should literally have it on a fade, shouldn't I? Really? It sounds a bit shit me just going, ah, I'm back again. <laughs> mm, smoked salmon. Oh, God, I hate salmon. It's dirty. That's a dirty fish. How does brake fluid get mixed up in the system since the fluid is full in the lines or just compressed by the master cylinder? There's no pump circulating the fluid around. Right, so one was brownie motion, where it just basically just shit jiggles. Number two is there is uh, convection currents. So as it gets hot at the bottom, there are your calipers, and it's not hot at the top. Heat rises, right? So basically the molecules jiggle more and they become less dense, so they float to the top. So you're just going to have that. So you're just going to have random fluctuations and jiggles of stuff. You're going to have um, fluctuations of things getting hot and cold and moving around. And just general the chaoticness of molecules they just don't sit around they like to jiggle around and move around and all sorts of shit um so there's all sorts of things going on you know it's just like but most of it'll be thermal most of it's down to thermal stuff why didn't they all just sandblast the parts because that's retarded what do you mean why well, didn't they do it properly? I, I don't know. Um, yeah, that was quite funny. Um, I've done a video on that, so you just have to wait for that. Um, but uh, yes, um, yeah. So let's, let's, we'll do a bit more, Dave. Then we'll we'll get onto the the dull. Takes you step by step. Use the pause button. The first time you do it, it's going to take you forty five minutes. The third time you do it, it's going to take you fifteen. It's quick, simple and easy, and it's called Dump and Run. What we're talking about? Right, let's just skip forward and see more shit he's talking. Just randomly pick something. Wait, loads. More repeated band before you check to see where it starts. But the rebound is then one big one and then see. Right, well, I can't hear what this guy's saying, so... Is he doing a and a Let's actually go back a bit... An older bike or a... Here we go. Let's, we'll just listen to him talk shit for a bit. A touring type bike, if they're on there, they're clean. These? No. What if that shock shaft is 100% clean? <gasps> oh, oh, yeah. What Sorry, Dave. You've been, you've been outdone. You've been outdone. Revzilla. I've just done a... I love, I love Pete. They keep on trying. They keep on trying. No, Revzilla, not Mexican, whoever this is. What the fuck? What? Oh, I put, I put the Z. <laughs> uh, funny. Oh, top versus horsepower. Cool. Cool. What is torque? And what is horsepower? Oh, it's Christian. Let's see if he gets it right. So, the most simplistic way I can say is torque is a force it is what an engine is trying to make if we split up the cycle when it goes bang right when there's combustion and all this fuel deflagration all this burning going on the pressure increases because it's a confined space that pressure is basically momentum transfer of all of these atoms that were once your fuel and air now turned into exhaust gases colliding with the piston it collides with everything but everything doesn't move but the piston does right and it converts that motion of the gas molecules hitting the top of the piston it's a momentum transfer to the piston and the piston travels down the bore and then we put a mechanical linkage in there to turn that linear motion into rotational motion Right. At the end of the day, it goes through all your gearbox, turns up at your rear wheel, and that rotational motion turns back into linear motion. Booyah! Sorted. So what is horsepower? A horsepower is how much can it do this? How much can it do this? Because you might have one bang a minute. Or you might have 10,000 bangs a minute. It's... And one will use more. One will one will convert the energy that is chemically bound in the fuel to kinetic energy more. Right? That's it. That's it. There is no comparison because torque has to. Torque is the thing. 
Horsepower is the measurement of how frequently you do that thing. Right? And collectively. So you add it all up. You add it all up and go, how much was that? That's why it looks like an area under a graph. You have a maximum value, which is your, your peak torque line, your torque versus your RPM. And what you do is you say, how much under there is that? And then you get this horsepower curve, which is basically just the summation of that. Beautiful. Let's see if we can get all this from that. And how is it that this 1900cc Harley makes more than twice the torque of the 636cc Kawasaki, yet the Kawasaki makes way more horsepower? Let's open up the shop manual and find out. So basically you're starting this premise, which is why everyone, everyone is confused, because you've started this premise with that they are comparable, that it is one versus the other. This isn't nuts and bolts, right? A nut and a bolt are very different. You know what I mean? They're very different to each other. Yes, they both contain threads. You can think of that as like RPM. But a nut and a bolt are two different things. They work in different ways, etc., etc., etc. Right? Th this isn't this. This isn't a nut and a bolt. This is the head of a bolt versus the threads. You know what I mean? It, it, it's the, they are one is a component of the other, or one is a part of the same thing. There is no verses. Why do people do this? You have an engine that can make more torque and an engine that makes less torque. Depending on their RPM of both of them doing this will give you different horsepower results. So basically, what you are talking about is the, it's the two things. It's torque versus RPM, if you want to put it that way. Right? You can have an engine... You can have... You can have an engine that has one or the other. You can have an engine that has a lot of torque but has not much RPM. You can have an engine that produces fuck all torque but a lot of RPM. Or you can have an engine that has both. But that is one versus the other. In other words, when you're designing your engine, are you designing this engine to be a high torque engine? Or are you trying to design this engine to be a high RPM engine? And because they have two different, completely different things. You can have two engines that make the same horsepower, but they'll have two different characteristics. So why the fuck are we talking about horsepower? This episode is powered by Dirt. Go remember, it's explained. It's explained, exclamation. Let's see exclamations in the right bloody place. Durboost batteries. Get 10% off your next Durboost purchase at... I also noticed as well is that it says their torque and horsepower explained, where in the, the actual, when you opened the manual, it said... Talk versus horsepower. Revzilla.com with discount code TSM10. I'll kick things off with some oversimplified definitions to prime your brain for understanding. Torque is strength, and horsepower is speed. No. With those concepts. <laughs> what? No. Right. Strength. Bad word. Force. It's easy for people to understand. You force your way into this girl's knickers. You force your way into this window. You force your fist into this guy's face. Force. It's easy to understand. Why put the word strength? The resistance to not deform or buckle or break or twist or fracture is not the same as talk. You fucking clown. Straight away talking shit. Is strength. And horsepower... Now, horsepower is speed. No, but it's not just speed. Speed is speed. Velocity can be compared to speed. Speed isn't fucking... Because speed does... I did say it's torque and RPM when you consider designing an engine. Which one do you want to go for, right? And you can have them versus each other. You can say, well, we can have for the same... Just say CC or the same amount of fuel. We can only fuel it this much. So if we can only fuel it this much... Um, do we want to go more talky or do we want to go faster? You've got a, a thing to describe between the two of them there. But they can both easily have the horsepower... Just fucking no. <laughs> ...is speed. With those concepts in mind, let's dive a little deeper. And I'll start with torque. Torque is a... Now, you can make... Like, it goes, oh, torque is blah, blah, blah. So let me get your Harley engine, right? You can redesign little parts of that, keep the specifications the same... Same rod ratio, same fucking stroke, same bore, and you can make it rev higher. Right? Sorted. So now what does that mean? Because he's going to try and relate that back. It's just like, 
it's just fucking uh. twisting motion and you get it when force is applied at a dis it's not a twist uh, a twisting motion with those concepts in mind let's dive a little deeper and i'll start with torque torque is a twisting motion and you get it when force is applied at a distance from a pivot point if you put one pound of force on the end of a one foot wrench you've got one pound foot of torque if you apply that same one pound of force to the end of a two foot wrench, you've got two pound feet of torque. Yes, but what's missing there is the distance you have to travel is different, right? The distance of the, basically the circle, the circle you travel, which basically means you have to apply that force for a longer amount of time. And force has acceleration squared in it, right? It has a time variant in there, right? It's, it's, it's... Velocity squared, no, sorry. But it has a time variant in there. It has a time variable. It's just, it's just fucking... More force or more distance equals more torque. What, what, more di no, 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 it doesn't. Because this is the thing. That means that all I need to do is just make my crank, my crank pin really big. I just get more torque automatically. It's like, well, no, of course you don't. No, there's this thing called energy conservation, right? It just doesn't work that way, dickhead. Pretty straightforward, right? No. Well, that same force over distance scenario is what produces torque inside your... It's weird because if you look at the calculations for horsepower, it's force over distance. Force over displacement over time. So, isn't it the same thing as torque? This is what confuses people. Your engine. Combustion pressure pushes down on the piston crown, and that downward force is applied to the distance from the crank pin to the crank's axis of rotation. Every... Well, well, you see, all that gibberish inside your engine. Combustion pressure pushes down on the piston crown and that downward force is applied to the distance from the crank pin to the crank's axis of rotation. See that, that, that down bit, you can kind of forget all this. You can kind of imagine your piston is at this point, right? It doesn't matter. The, the angle of deflection does, but what I'm saying is it, it. you can imagine this is not there. It's not. It's an elastic, it's an elastic compression. It doesn't matter. Every time there's a combustion stroke, the turning force produced at the crank is the turning force. Fucking hell. It's transferred through the transmission and final drive to your rear wheel where it pushes you down the road. How does it do that? It turns a linear force into a linear force. In other words, a force. Just a force. There are no turning forces, for fuck's sake. But the torque of an individual combustion stroke is brief. It's just one shove that won't get you moving very fast or take you very far. In order to cover any distance, you need that... Oh, you see the fast? No, you see the acceleration doesn't matter. It's bullshitting again. So it says just once. If it just happens once... Oh, that won't get you moving very fast or take you... It won't get you moving very fast. Well, you need to explain what that means. Do you mean acceleration or just peak velocity? F -f Far? Yeah, true. I can get that. There's all the losses. Your combustion stroke is brief. It's just one shove that won't get you moving very fast or take you very far. In order to cover any distance, you need that shove to happen repeatedly. And the more frequently you get that little push, the faster and farther you'll go. Mm, see, that's not entirely true because you can have... It's like this. Get me a little RC engine that revs its fucking nuts off. We're not talking about... We're not. There's no mention of load here. You see, this is the thing when you get to basics. You've got to make it really simple and basic. This is not. I'm poking holes all over it. Well, that's what horsepower is. The reason why it pokes holes is because then people say, well, if I wanted to make an engine better, why don't I just do this? It's like, no, that wouldn't, no you don't understand, it won't work. For instance, why don't I just make my crank pin bigger? If I make my, my crank pin bigger, then I get more torque for free. It's like, no, you don't. But you don't. You, 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 you don't. That's not how it works. And it's like, but you just said, it's like, well, I was simplifying it, but you simplified something that's wrong. <laughs> What's, why are you telling me this shit? It's a rating of how quickly or frequently torque is applied in a given period of time. We call it horsepower because horses were the... But you see, why then do you call it speed? Surely it should be then frequency. Well, that's what horsepower is. It's a rating of how quickly or frequently torque is applied. Quickly, right, is the intervals is the period period periodicity the frequency between you know the 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 distance in time between two events right the periodicity or the frequency right so why the fuck has that got to do with speed if i say i'm going 50 mile an hour 
it's not really frequency or periodicity, is it? It's not, I do this every hour. It's not, because I could do 50 mile an hour for four minutes and then stop. I haven't covered 50 miles and it hasn't been an hour. In a given period of time. We call it horsepower because horses were the main motive force back in the 17th century when the term was coined. But the core of the word is power. And power is a measure of how quickly work gets done. In the what does that mean? In the case of a motorcycle, the work getting done is the movement of the bike down the road. With more power, equaling more speed. Oh, right. So now more power now equals more speed. Okay, then. Just like that. The equation for horsepower is torque, so force times distance, multiplied by RPM, divided by a constant of 5,250. Two. 5,250 may seem random, but it's- Why is it 5,250? Why have you changed it? It's not. It's just got a bunch of math behind it that I'm not going to go into because I don't want you to click away. No, because you don't fucking know. I bet you he doesn't realize it's just two pi and that's it. But it's not. It's just got a bunch of math behind it that I'm not going to go into because I don't want you to click away. The point is, by introducing revolutions per minute, time becomes part of the equation. So the more- No, it's-, it's... Right, right, so... <laughs> right, so by putting minute in, we've got time. What's force? What's force? Got a bunch of math behind it that I'm not going to go into because I don't want you to click away. The point is, by introducing revolutions per minute, time becomes part of the equation. So the more torque you can stuff into the same amount of time, the more horsepower you make and the faster you go. So, so that's why it's just, so why, like I said, why, if you just said that, didn't it click in your fucking pea brain? I'm not, it might not be him who says this, right? This is a script. Why didn't, why did you equate horsepower to speed? Why wasn't horsepower equivalent to RPM? One way to conceptualize this, like that would be more like to do with frequency, revs, you know, frequency, yeah. Is to think about running. Okay. Torque is a runner's strength. Say, how hard you push off the ground with your stride. I'll give you that, go on then. Whereas horsepower is how quickly you're able to swing your legs to apply that strength. But that's not speed though, is it, you dickhead? Like, just imagine, just imagine this guy who's running up this hill is 10 times taller, right? He'd be able to do one step for 20 of this guy's little steps. But does that mean they're going the same speed? Horsepower is made up anyway. What do you mean? Please explain that. It's not made. Everything's made up. What do you mean? A meter's made up. What do you mean? A meter's... A horsepower's not made up. You're talking shite. Some hulking linebacker may ripple the pavement with their strength, but a more lithe athlete with less muscly legs can cram more strides into less time. Well, that's because his distance between each stride is fucking... See, this is what I mean. The distance between each stride is bigger, right, when this guy runs and he does it more frequently. It's almost like frequency. No, what you meant is what you've heard other people say, which is he just arbitrarily picked 32,000 feet for a horse. And it's like, but you have to do that. What do you expect James Watt to do? Go around and measure every single fucking horse on earth and then go, oh, it's actually 31,612. It's like, you can do that. It's it's it, you, We do that for everything. One guy went with his hands like this and went, that's a meter. <laughs> You know what I mean? It, that That's how all of these things work. Is that it, I've heard loads of people say, oh, he just made it up. He's like, no, he didn't make it up. He actually tried to calculate as an example. What he was trying to do is, what he did was, is he, he chose a mean, but he did actually measure a horse and just say, we're not going to measure every single fucking horse on earth, but um, it's like, right, this is a horse we've grabbed now. And the whole point is, you've got to remember, it was almost like a marketing ploy at the time. It, well, it's not even a marketing ploy. It was actually to test these things. But it was to say, look, your horse can pull this. I've got an engineer that's this size. It's going to cost you this much per month. And it can do the work of six horses. And it's like, really? Six horses? Shit. So, if, in other words, if I buy this and pay you the monthly fee... I can get rid of six horses and this thing will keep on working as long as I put fucking fuel in it. At night time, all day, I don't need to turn it to, I don't need to take it to the glue factory, I don't need to feed it, I don't have to pay for fucking anything. You know what I mean? So it's just like, oh cool. Um well yeah, go on then I'll have one. Uh you know what I mean? So it it you could say that about anything. It's like, you know you've got a, just think about weights and measures, right? You've got a stone. 
right? You've got a fucking stone, and you say, this is one stone. This is the stone. You know what I mean? Paints it blue. You know what I mean? And then everyone measures in that village off this stone. We all agree that this stone is what we're going to pay for this thing. And when you turn up, you go to another village, and they've got their own stone, and you say, well, how much is our stone versus yours? So what they do is they just get a fucking beam of wood and put it on a fucking plinth and go, put your stone on our stone. Our stone weighs twice as much as yours. You know what I mean? It's simple as that, and it's how it all began. But you just got to arbitrarily just say, that's one beef. You know what I mean? A beef is a good example. We could just say, it's one beef. It's three millimetres, approximately. It's one beef. You know what I mean? And just base everything off that. And... Um, sorry, Dave. I was not wanting to yap on. I just really hate it when people say that. It fucks me off. <laughs> so they make more power. It's the same scenario with our big. In no, it's not. Break horsepower is how fast you hit the wall. Talk is how far you drag the wall with water. Fucking stupid thing to say. It's. <laughs> It's all kinetic energy is that example, so it's just shit. Charlie Davidson and our inline four sport bike. This 1900cc street glide makes 113 pound feet of torque because it's got a massive. Yes, but look, it's like, what's it say there? It's like at two and a half thousand RPM. CC street glide. So in other words, if you want, if for 1900cc, if you want to make a shitload of torque, it's going to happen low. Slide makes 100 and when it comes to power 13 pound feet of torque oh, that's not in the power that's not in the power graph because it's got a massive engine so lots of combustion pressure as well as a long stroke so a greater distance over which that combustion force is applied oh say that again sorry say that again as well as a long stroke so a greater distance over which that combustion force is applied mm, it doesn't work it doesn't specifically work that way you're making that sound like that's an outright rule formula one engines make you like cunts and don't then there's our 636cc Kawasaki. It only makes 48 foot-pounds of torque because its cylinders are relatively small and it has a short crank throw. But if we look at peak horsepower figures, the roles actually reverse. The big Harley here only makes 83 horsepower, whereas the Kawasaki makes 106. Nearly, I get it, nearly everything is made up. Maths is not made up. The symbols we use to represent these things are made up, but mathematics itself isn't made up. Like, like, three eggs is three eggs, right? If you want to call them eggs, you want to call it three, it doesn't matter. If I hold up how many eggs there are and hold up three digits, they match up in quantity. So mathematics and division, subtraction, um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, they all work regardless. That's why this, you know, mathematics is the universal language. That's why no one's made their own version. Well, they have done in the past, but uh, that's why the entire world uses mathematics full stop. And the other thing is, as well, is this is why we'd use mathematics to talk to aliens, because it's the only universal thing. Because at the end of the day, three eggs, three beef, three rocks, are three rocks, three beef, and three fucking eggs or fingers or whatever. It wouldn't matter. Team, what gives, right? Well, if we look at the horsepower equation, it... Well, no, it's quite simple. Just look at the bottom of the graph, you dickhead. Look where the Harley gives up, and then the fucking... If you look at it, right, it's like, look where it gives up. In the rev range, this doesn't really this graph doesn't start until this is given up. So you pick, you decide. Like this would keep on going if it could, all right? It's, it'd be the same curve, wouldn't it? <sighs> but actually, just to show you the offset. So it shows you where this was designed to work at the top end and where this wasn't designed to work at the top end. This wasn't designed to work at the low end, as you can see, and this was designed to work at the low end. Oh, come on. I'm pressing, I'm pressing the wrong button here. 16. What gives, right? Well, if we look at the horsepower equation, it all boils down to revs. The maths isn't made up. Stop saying maths is made up. We only use small parts of maths, which is applicable to our world. No, you don't. What do you think your phone does? You use the application that uses the mathematics that are in your phone, in your satellites, in everything. So if you use it or not, it's like saying, you know, let me put it this way. Let me rephrase it is that you only use a small part of maths. It's like, okay then, if you only use a small part of maths, it's like saying, ah, I only use a fucking small part of my tyre, just get rid of the rest of it. Or there are things in your car or whatever that you don't understand, but you still use them. Harley builds revs slowly and has a low red line, only 5,500 RPM. Meanwhile, the Kawasaki zings up past 15,000 RPM. 
So while the Kawasaki makes a lot less torque, it's able to apply that torque almost three times more frequently. And which one matters? So its power output, and thus speed, is high. The fact is... See, he's, he's gone power output and therefore speed. He's literally saying, like, velocity uh, traversing the Earth is the same as horsepower. It's like, no, it's not. That's not how it works. It's not how it works. For instance, uh, Challenger 2 has, I think it's 1,500 horsepower. Fucking don't go anywhere. <laughs> it goes fa it's 62 tons. It goes fucking quick for 62 tons. But that's the whole point, is that high horsepower doesn't mean speed. It just doesn't. It's about... It's whatever. Torque and revs are at odds with each other. That's because to get torque... They're not at odds with each other. One is built on top of the other. You typically want a longer stroke, since that corresponds to a greater distance. What's I say? No, there are tons of math physical models which are mathematically rigorous but just don't match experiment what what has that got to do with what you said i don't understand uh, i don't think you understand what models are there are tons of physical models which are when you say physical i think you mean from physics which are mathematically rigorous but just don't match experiment i don't see what the point is all mathematics doesn't all mathematics doesn't have to re reflect reality. That that's like saying like all lang all words don't have to mean something. Or we have words that are redundant and stuff like that. I don't understand. Um, distance yeah. between the crank pin and the crank center line, but a longer stroke has a faster piston speed for a given RPM, so the engine can't safely rev as high. Well, go back. I'm, I'm getting confused here. Is it math? Math or mathematics? It's mathematics. It's maths. Because, what did someone say to me? You don't say chemistry in chemistries. It's like, and then what did I say? But you do say physics. So it doesn't, that, that analogy doesn't work, dickhead. The thing is, it's math, it's mathematics because it ends in an S. Like, when you say chemistry, right, it's like it ends in a Y. But physics ends in an S. And mathematics ends in this, so you just shorten it to maths. Math, math is just a fucking retarded American, as usual, way to say it. Someone had a go the other day going, you, 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 you have a go Americans far too much. I was just like, calm down, you sound like you're going to shoot up a school. <laughs> uh, maths doesn't have to reflect re reality. No, of course it doesn't. There's these things called imaginary numbers. They're constructs within maths to help you do things that are complicated. Um, for instance... A uh, compass, a compass, uh, as in like geometry, uh, geometry, like a drawing, you know, compass, a, a bloody circle drawing compass, right? There's no circle in it. There's the, 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 if you get, oh, I need a compass for this. It's like the compass, there is no circle, right? You can have a compass where the tip is square, right? Offset, it can be asymmetrical, it can be a hermaphrodite compass. You could have the pivot. It has no pivot, it's locked, right? You could make a compass just out of two bits of wood tied together or a piece of string. There are no inherent circles in these things, but you can make you, you make perfect circles out of them or you make circles out of them. It's what it's designed to do. So you don't need to have... Uh, or the tools that you use don't have to reflect what you're trying to do. Um, but yeah, there are imaginate numbers, infinite series, stuff like that. Um, there's all sorts of, and that, like I said, they're tools to do something else. Like if you give a, a compass to someone who's never seen how they use, they're like, "What the fuck is we do? Just is this just to piss people off by stabbing them?" It's like, yes, that's exactly what it's about. If you mean that mathematics should not reflect reality, I agree, but it is still made up formal system. The, you, what you're arguing here is nothing. You're arguing nothing. Is there a point to what you're saying? Like. Mathematics is made up by humans. Oh, I don't see what the point is. Is a circle round or just lots of straight lines connected together? Well, it's um, not lots of straight lines connected together. It depends what you want to do. If you want to get down to the Planck scale, then it's an uncertainty. We don't know. Um, yeah, so in a sense, it, this is the whole point about uh, quant quantized stuff in it, and the world seems to, the, the real world seems to be pixelated, which is really quite bizarre. Um,
but actually helps us a lot because that helps us mathematically. <laughs> it really does help us mathematically. That corresponds to a... Let's see what his, his, his talking shot again. The speed go. is high. The fact is, torque and revs are at odds with each other. That's because to get torque, the, you typically want... A they're not at odds with each other. Oh, Jesus Christ. ...longer stroke, since that corresponds to a greater distance between the crank pin and the crank center line. You see, this is where you're wrong as well. You talk, what you're talking about here is peak torque, which is completely different. But a longer stroke has a faster piston speed for a given RPM, so the engine can't safely rev as high. Meanwhile, a shorter stroke engine will make less torque, but it can rev a lot higher, so it'll produce more horsepower. This is all dependent on design. Maths has to be proven in reality, though. Like I say, three eggs. If I if I say this, it's a construct, right? So, but if I say this, three eggs plus two eggs, five eggs. Job done. Mathematics. Vehicle weights being equal. The point is to kill us with uh, Tom. Let's have a look at Tom's channel. Let's see if he. I want to see. I do want to see if because someone says that these people are old boys, and some people say, oh. Oh, you only joined, like, really recently. Oh. Oh. It's almost like you're not worth listening to. More torque means stronger acceleration, while more horsepower means a faster top speed. Ooh, steady, steady, steady what you say there. So it'll produce more horsepower. Vehicle weights being equal, more torque means stronger acceleration, while more horsepower means a faster top speed. Depends. Again, you can think of lots of examples. Thankfully, every motorcycle comes with a way to manipulate torque in order to optimize acceleration and speed. It's called a transmission. Remember the lever length example from the beginning of this video? Well, gears are levers too, they just happen to be round. First gear is the longest lever and top gear is the shortest. Oh, you see, you're doing the bad thing again. What matters is not gears, it's gear pairs. It's the ratio between the two that matters with first gear providing the most acceleration and top gear offering the most speed. Like I could literally put two gears, make all those gears the same size and just have a weird wobbly shaft. But it, it, it's the ratio between the two that matters, not the gears themselves. Like you can have a gear that's the size of a house and its mating gear is the size of a car and I can have that exact same ratio as little tiny gears in my hand in a clock. A watch, sorry. They are the same. They do the same thing. Right? The ratio is what matters. In summary, torque is just a twisting force. No, it's not a twist. Oh, fucking hell. Nothing in the universe just twists. Nothing in the universe just twists. There is no such thing. The best example I can think of is you imagine you had a hammer. Right? Um, or you imagine you have... Uh, no, a hammer. A hammer. Right? You have a hammer and the handle is attached to a frame where it can swing. Right? This hammer can swing around, like a sledgehammer. It can swing around in a big circle. Now, you have a little thing that holds it horizontally. Then I get a hammer and I smash it down. And the hammer swings. You've got torque. The hammer's swinging round and round and round. That's torque. But I smash the hammer down. Yeah, but you did the hammer in an arc, Matt. That's torque. All right. So if I get something and drop it vertically down onto the hammer and it swings around in exactly the same way, tell me the difference. There is no difference. You can't tell the difference between either. Right? Is It's like you can have that hammer hit another hammer that swings the opposite way. You know, they clap into each other. Like gear teeth. And it's like, now we've got uh, 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 the forces reversed. This hammer this, this is twisting the other way like a gear. Gear sets. You've got an input and output. You've got gear sets. It's turning the other way. We've reversed the force. Right? Now, you think when you reverse a force, yeah? So when you all of a sudden reverse a force the opposite direction, right? You get mass out of it. This is not what happens with gear sets because it's not what you think it is. When a gear tooth is coming up, it hits another gear tooth on the other gear and they go the same way. But one gear is going clockwise and the other one's going anti-clockwise. For example, if we just get a gear, oh, that's a shit picture, isn't it? Like this and a gear like this, both exactly the same. You just imagine they've got teeth in the middle. Imagine we'll do a crossover where there's a teeth. The force, um, so this gear is rotating this way. Um, 
this way like that all right and let's rotate it that way and that way all right so these are going into each other so the force for all of this system this gear's teeth are transferring to these teeth that way and these teeth have been pushed that way the force is the same but the torque has flipped you can't do that with forces you know it's a, imagine going in your car forward and then reversing like a piston right when you re a, a piston's going up and then it goes down right you can't just reverse it like that the forces you know you get basically a mass out of it because you're changing the accelerations g forces in a, in a sense right you um basically you're almost like it cre it, it, creating mass if you want to put it that way it's all to do with inertia but that's the whole point right is when you do that when you do that with gears that's not what's happening right is there are not there is not a twisting force it is a force at a pivotal distance you're adding a pivot in do drive francis did all this work for you on their channel uh no 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 drive francis video is just as wrong he's had two goals and the shit both one both videos are shite um because everyone everyone keeps on saying this stupid thing about torque like like there are forces like linear forces and then there are torque it's a different force it's not it's the same thing you just added a mechanism in there it's it, they're not the same thing and the, this is why people can't understand these things it's one of the first things you do when you do kinematics and stuff is you learn that you need to separate it all you know it, it's it's visual way and twisting forces yeah uh, could we go over that one too? I've done a video on it when he did his first one. He's, he doesn't know. His, yeah, he's, it's all. It's all. It's exactly what I say. I've done a video on this, but it doesn't matter. Loads of people have done videos on this, and everyone doesn't know who to believe. Although I can prove it, and these fucking knobheads can't. It's what turns your rear wheel and actually pushes you down the road. You can feel torque when you open the throttle. It pushes you back in the seat. You can feel torque all the time. It's all the time it's the force the force just like the jedi the force is talk the, the, the force is around a pivot and that is what we call talk basically it's like saying um you've heard of like centrifugal forces centripetal forces what we are saying is that there is a force and there is a mathematical equation that tells you about using this force in this scenario so we would call that centripetal force or we'll call that torque. If we just say force, we mean the force, the original one. You know what I mean? The only one. We have force. And then it's like, because it's what it is. It's mass times acceleration, right? So when you have that mass times and acceleration, which is all about inertia and reference frames, it's all, this is all Newton and then eventually Einstein stuff, right? Um, it's like, right, so now we get that force. We want to apply that to something else. So we say, okay, then, um, what happens if we p apply it to a fixed point and we rotate around, around, around? Because it's like this. You have angular velocity, but no one thinks that angular velocity is twisting velocity. No one says that, right? It's twisting speed, which would be the worst way of saying it. But you get what I mean. It, it's that simple. You said that division, subtraction, other stuff works regardless. And mathematics is in a universal language. I did. My point is that mathematics is not so universal. Well, it is. What does universal mean? What does universal mean? It means everywhere. And you say it's, it's not so universal. Well, tell me where it isn't then. Um, but yeah. You've got this force, and you say, well, let's go around. Uh, you can't speak to aliens on languages of mathematic systems. They don't know. Yes, you can. It is like explaining using complex numbers to people who don't know. No, but you, you, you can. You, uh, you have to know the rules. No, it's simple. It's simple. If you give aliens binary numbers, yeah, what you are talking about is the symbolism, right? So you're talking about this, right? If you show an alien this... Or just simply this. They don't know what that is. That is the same as this. They don't know. They don't know what that means. Right? But if I go like this and just go... It, it, it is a sequence for you. So you go... Um,
You know what I mean? You start doing that, they're like, oh, we recognise them. We, we, we recognise that sequence. You know what I mean? Like like that. It doesn't matter. You can use any. You can use anything. You could use that. You could use okay, that. It doesn't matter what the the symbol is. You're talking about symbolism. As soon as they understand prime numbers, then you can. Then they can. They they can do this, right? Just imagine if they did this. They did this sequence, right? And we'd be like, "Oh, right. So your your little ampersands." They mean the same as our asterisks. You know what I mean? That's a translation matrix, but you can still do it. Um, anyway, so yeah, we we have angular velocity, right? We have angular, we have angular velocity, we have angular acceleration, we have all of these things that are angular. And basically, that that word angular, or you know, is is just telling you, or rotational inertia, it should be called angular inertia. I don't know why it's not. It really pisses me off that sometimes, um, but. The fact of the matter is, right, is that um, we we have these words, but people are running around going, "Oh, it's twisting velocity." You're like, "What?" You know, when things go round and round and round and round and round and round, round, it's like, "Yeah, but that, that that's just a speed. That's just a velocity. I uh, know that's just how fast. That's that's. I'm going to trace out this circle and see how far I've gone in that amount of time. There, you work velocity. You know what I mean? Is it's like. It's that it's easy done. It's like so. Why is talk talkers? This is what happens when when I'm gonna say it. When I'm gonna say it. When idiots. <laughs> no, this is what happens when people who don't understand um, a word get hold of that word and start jabbering on about that word. So you know, back in the day when they were writing like stuff like books like um, gas and other internal uh, uh, gas and other combustion product engines and stuff like that. all these books, right? You know, thermodynamic books. Uh, Carno was doing it. As Sid, what's his name? Is it Sadiq? Or is it Sadi? Sa Sa no, I can't remember his bloody name now. Sadi, is it Sadi? Carno. Um. But yeah, the fact of the matter is, is that um, um, when they were writing all these books and when you're doing all these things, right? When they were working all this out from the beginning, they're like, "Well, we're just going to call we're going to call this talk, right? That's what we're going to call that, just like we're going to call." Um, I don't know. Just like we're going to call that. I'm trying to think of something that's similar in physics where we have something we call it. Some you just yeah, cent just call it centrifuge. Centrifugal, right? We just call that centripetal, right? We're just going to call these these things. Now, if you look at centripetal and centrifugal, you're just basically talking about the set. You're talking about forces at the different ends, right? That's at the different ends of something. So, if you get a, a, a conker on the end of a string and swing it around, you can say center finding. You know, trying to find the center or not find the center and all this shit and things in tension. You know what I mean? It's you can have all of these things, right? Where it goes out or in, and all that kind of shit. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So what you've got is you've got these systems where we we've got a force. You, you've got this word centripetal force. You know, you could call it this angular force, which we sit and just call it. We'll call it torque for some reason. I don't know where the root name comes from. Where does the root name come from, actually? Uh, it probably means to twist, I imagine. And what is it? Entomology? Ento? Is it? No. That's how you say it. Fucking hell. And so it comes from to twist. Yeah. So it the word comes from to twist. And then it's like, oh, it's a twisting force. Like, oh my god, they used to say that back in Latin, retards. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's how old that is. And then people just go, oh, it's just this thing. It's it's a a force is a it's just yeah, it's just the way it goes. Uh, a force with a continuously changing vector. Ah, right. So let's let's talk about that for a second, because that's two different things. Because a force with a continuously changing vector. It's not a force that's special. See, that is a good. That's actually that's the best way to point that out. 
what you're missing there is what's constraining it. We, we talk about um, you talk about a, a force, which is a concept, right? It's an acceleration of a mass, but you need something to constrain that. You know what I mean? We need something to constrain that. You can't just do that because it requires a force, and this is what a lot of people don't understand. When you go round a corner, you are actually accelerating, right? And I know that seems mental, but when you go when you go round a corner, you are accelerating. It's because if you think, right, we know from Newton's laws and all the rest of it that if you've got a motion, something going forward, you've got something going forward like this. Right, it's just going that way, just say. Now, what we want it to do is we want it to go around a corner. Well, this will keep on going unless a force acts upon it. So there's a force there, look, you see. There's a force there, right, to make this thing go on an arc. To make, oh, God, that's going to dodge in it. To make this thing go on an arc like this, you have to basically push it. You think about what you're doing, you have to push it. And if it's a linkage to a pivot, right, then what happens is, is this is in, under tension. That's why if you swing a conch around and you go too fast or you make the string weak or something, it snaps and it fucks off in a straight line. So you've got to add this to it. It's not a force on its own. Right? There's a mechanism involved in there. Right? There's some other um, there's some other mechanism, right? So yes, the vector, but again, the vector is just a, the vector is just it's just a description of what's happening, you know. So there's nothing special about it. This is why you can swing something round on a fucking golf ball or whatever you can rotate something or whatever, and then a, a conquer on a string. And you go, look, it's this thing magical torque that's twisting this conch around, and then you cut the string and it fucks off in a straight line. You go, where did the torque go? Oh my god. Where did the talk go? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it just it just it just pissed off. <laughs> this magical force knew to turn from a straight is that's what I'm saying, it's not a twisting force. Right? There is no force that's twisting. There is no force arrow on a sensor vector where you can bend it. Right? Whereas a past, present and future it's bent. Right? There's no such thing there's no such thing like that. Right? There's just no such thing. Uh, broken drive shaft. Well, this is the thing. If it's hollow, then it was all just linear displacement. From every single atom's point of view, they were just going in that direction, that direction, that direction, that direction, that direction, in a big circle. right? But the centre of the drive shaft, that, that was there. So what happened to that? It just it Was that twisting as well? Was that twisted? Because if you filled it, it's now twisting, apart from the very central atom, which is just rotating on the spot, which atoms don't do. So... Yeah, where did the talk go? Just fucked off. Um, any road, let's get on with this. I've got 15 minutes. Horsepower is how often that torque is applied. Horsepower is calculated from torque and is a way to measure work with more power equaling more speed. Hope mm, again, it's about load as well, so... Hopefully that clears up a bit of confusion and gives you some insight and understanding into those horsepower and torque numbers that everyone cares so much about. Thanks for watching this episode of the Shot Manual. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. And I gotta say, I enjoy it. It's a huge privilege to be able to teach people about motorcycles so they can understand them and work on them better. So, if But that was nothing to do with understanding and working on better. If you like what we do here, you like the information we bring and the questions we answer. Yeah, that's just, that's just, it's just nonsense, isn't it? The usual shite. What was the last video they did? Oh, jackets, that's it. That's what they were trying to do, you see. They're trying to get you to buy all these clothes. Look at these fucking... They're not even crying with the thumbnails, are they? <laughs> they're not even trying. It's just a screenshot. It's just like the auto clip. Oh, look at these views. Aren't these views terrible? Like 224. These are all published in the same day, look. These four, same day. Wow. Wow. Oh, look, they even do it tires, look. Oh, my God. Let's have a quick guy and see what it says about cush drives, then I've got to piss off. Got to pick up some... Uh, some guy's dropping off some parts for me to powder coat and Zeracoat, I think. 
We'll, uh, we'll work it out. There's a component set in most bikes' back wheels that nobody really thinks about. It's not listed in most service schedules, and you probably only notice them when they fall out of your hub when you take your rear wheel off. It's your Kush drive. That's a good, good indication, isn't it? <laughs> and these things are a lot more important than people give them credit for. I'll explain why and show you how to inspect them in this episode of the Shop Manual. This episode is powered by Duraboost oh, Code yeah, TSM10. Yeah. Cush Drive is short for Cushion Drive. And like any good cushion, these things make life more comfortable for your engine and for you. These little rubber cushions rest in the... I don't think it's about comfort. It's so it doesn't destroy itself, but whatever. ...wheel hub and fit snugly with the sprocket carrier and helps soften driveline loads to make life easier on your transmission, chain, and sprockets. The integrity of your Cush Drive is also critical for throttle response because as these things wear, they're going to compress and that's going to introduce play and thus driveline lash. Loose cushion is going to feel like a super loose chain, so there's going to be a lurching sensation when you open the throttle. You're not going to fit. I've never been on a bike, and I've been on a bike that had some fush, fucking fucked cushions. Um, you, 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 if you ride the bike every day, you might notice a difference over... I don't think you're going to notice it over time. Then a delay on engine braking after you close the throttle. So if your throttle response sucks when you've already checked your throttle free play and your chain slack, then your cush drive should be next on the list. I don't, I don't think anyone or you could ever... T I would love to get two bikes, get the same bike, get him ride it around for half an hour, and then bring it in, change it, let him have another go, and say, could you feel the difference? He's like, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, that's weird, because we put the foot one in first. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'd love, I'd love for him to be able to tell us the difference. The best way to check is with the wheel off the bike. So this is something I do pretty much every time I change tires. Just grab the sprocket and try and twist it relative to the hub. I don't want to see any movement, but the few manuals that do list a sur what? service limit will say three to five millimeters. It's like three to five for the service limit, but he reckons it won't move. Some of them are real tight. Some of them are real tight and they don't move, but it's like, I, I won't do it if it moves at all. You, this, I bet you can go to a dealership now and take apart six bikes, different brands and all that, and you'll get one to move like a millimetre or so. You'll be like, no, I've been that. Now, I think that's excessive because the engine torque is going to twist this sprocket a whole lot more than I can with my fingers, so less movement is better. With yeah, but you you got to remember, it's like a spring, you retard. The, the more you turn it, the more it gets compressed. Oh, it's awesome. Engine torque is going to twist this sprocket a whole lot more than I can with my fingers, so less movement is better with zero being ideal. If you're watching this video and you're still a long way from tire replacement or you just don't want to remove your rear wheel, you're in luck. Another easy way to check for Cush Drive free play is to click your bike into gear and then rock it back and forth and watch the sprocket carrier's movement relative to the hub. Two pieces of masking tape or a line from a paint pen are helpful reference. Oh, why don't you put some... Why do you put a bit of paint pen on the masking tip? <laughs> Points. A healthy cushion. That's probably the best thing to do in it. Drive might have a little bit of movement as the rubbers compress. Now, here's the funniest thing. Here's the funniest thing. Is that the bike he's using? Like that bike? Do we get to see? Is that bike brand new? Because to me, that bike looks brand new. If you're watching this video and you're still a long way from tire replacement, or you just don't want to remove your rear wheel, you're in luck. So the cush drive dampens the torque applied to the wheel. Yes. Because if you, it, 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 this is the thing, if you take the cush drive out, imagine what would happen. It'd be like a fucking impact gun. It'd go, uh. now obviously there's a lot of motion in there, but um, it's it's because you got to remember your piston is going, it's not so much for your transmission, don't listen to this retard, it's more to do with your pistons, like your piston and your crank, because it's bang and then there's a lot of nothing. Then it's bang and there's a lot of nothing. So the pulses are bang, 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 it's not continuous. And because it's not continuous, you don't want the bike to grab anywhere between those two. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. Or back talking, all that kind of shite. There's loads of reasons, but basically it's just... And so when you go like this, when you're accelerating, the gears just say pushing... The teeth are pushing... You've got two gears in front of your face. The teeth are pushing down. But when you back talk, the gears push back up. And that little space, right? The bigger that space, the more hammering action. You get the more force because it's mass and acceleration so basically you have a cush drive in there it's basically just to cushion the blow so it's not so much like hammering away 
Um, it's not so much the wheel it doesn't destroy itself. It's it's not the wheel because you could just, and they do, you have bikes where the chain is directly attached to the wheel, right? It's not it's not so the wheel doesn't destroy itself because you just you can just fill them up. You can just rigidly mount them. Right? It's literally for the it's for the engine. Another easy way to check for Cush Drive free play is to click your bike into gear. That bike is brand fucking new. Look at it. Look at it. And rock it back and forth. The tires have got like a, a mile on them. And watch the sprocket carrier's movement. But he's, he's showing you that now as well. That's junk. Relative to the hub. Two pieces of masking tape or a line from a paint pen are helpful. Look, it'd be like that, that fuck it bin that. Helpful reference points. A healthy cush drive might have a little bit of movement as the rubbers compress, but more or less the hub and sprocket carrier should move in unison. But you've just gone against what you said. Is that three to five millimeters? Looks like it is. Bin it. It's brand new. If not, you've got two options. The first is to simply replace the cush drive. He's going to say a shimmer, man, in a. They're sold as a set. They're usually pretty cheap. They drop right in the hub. Done deal. They're fucking not cheap. The second option, which you could consider the cheapskate fix or the MacGyver fix, depending on your perspective, is to shim the worn rubbers. A milk jug or oil bottle is usually about three quarters of a millimeter thick and works great for shimming. Sounds like experience here, doesn't it, you cheap bastard? Just cut them down to size and slot them between the rubber and the hub to take up the slack. I'll just buy some new ones. And you just said the cheap. And if you have to tap the sprocket carrier or even stand on it to press it in, Good. That's the kind of snug fit you want. I don't think he understands what the, the I don't think he understands what the cushion bit is. So <laughs> how long do these things typically last? A really long time. About fifty thousand miles usually. Depends. Depends how much you hammer on them. If you're you know if you're a traffic light dragster. In fact, it was hard to find a worn set for this video. I had to pull these out of my buddy's 2011 CBR 250 with 57,000 miles in it. And just because these things are durable and last a long time does not mean you shouldn't check them. You it's not just that, it's conditions again. If it goes hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, that can deteriorate. It's not a sealed system, oxygen, all that kind of shit, blah, 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 blah. Absolutely should. And if you find any play, take care of it. It's gonna improve your throttle response, which is gonna improve your sense of connection to the motorcycle. And it's also gonna allow this important component, the cush drive, to do what it's supposed to do, which is protect your transmission, sprocket, and chain. I don't know, I don't know how it protects your sprocket and tran your sprocket and chain when your sprocket and chain are one side of the cush drive. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Right then, that doesn't make sense. It's been wonderful spending time with you guys. Uh, we've had fun. I hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.